Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? And here we go. From the Hollywood foothills of North Carolina, welcome to episode 72 of the Confirmed Epic Podcast, the official podcast of TheEpicReview.com, THEpicReview.com, and proudly presented by the Geeks Worldwide Radio Network. I, of course, am one of your hosts, The Real Brad Bell, and joining me today, as always, is Andrew Stokes, also known as Andrew Stokes. Andrew, how are you doing, my friend? Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, considering we're on the verge of a nuclear holocaust with North Korea. But other than that, I'm just fine and dandy. So uh, I slept in today. Really? And I didn't do the things I wanted <laughs> what, to. What is crazy is, and this happens at the end of every summer. Okay. So I'm a school teacher getting ready to go back to work next Wednesday. Yeah. Not dreading it, not looking forward to it. Just It is what it is, to yeah. quote Panthers legendary coach John Fox. Uh but my sleep schedule is so screwed up in the summer in mm. that I go to bed at a reasonable time, usually like 11, but I can't fall asleep to about 1. Nah. But my body's still on school schedule, so You're the max out. I can sleep in is like 8 o'clock. That happens sometimes, yeah. Today, so, today was one of those mornings where I woke up. like my alarm. I set an alarm because I wanted to get up at a certain time, get a few things done. My alarm woke me up, but it was like I was like, I, I should get up, but maybe I could sleep in a few more minutes. And I was like that half awake, half asleep type mode for about an hour. I felt like I hate so, that mood. I would just rather I see. I got yeah. at a point where I just go ahead and wake up because I know I won't fall asleep. I need to. I need an alarm clock that makes me a cup of coffee at the same time, like right there in the bedroom. I can just get up and get the coffee and see. We had a Kareg for a long time, and Keurig? we still we still do Kareg. Keurig. Whatever. Keurig. I you got know, one right now. That's, one that's, that's my coffee maker is a Keurig. But it got so annoying to load each individual cup <laughs> that we moved back to the coffee pot. Well, yeah. If you're going to drink, like for me, one cup of coffee is probably the, the max I drink in a day. Oh, really? I mean, maybe I'll do two, but I mean, I, there's plenty of days I don't do any coffee. I drank one before I go. Yeah. When I'm on the crapper and watch him, and then watch a morning Joe. Yeah. And then I'll drink like a... Uh, it's not even the real deal here. The Yeti ripoff of yeah. uh, coffee. So that's probably two cups. Yeah. And then at work, I always have at least one cup, usually like one or two o'clock. So I drink four cups of coffee wow. a day, which is probably terrible for me. And I put the International Delight depends, Creamer in there, which depends is so on how much bad. You're putting in there. Well, I, so I got a new, because uh, I'm doing the Keurig, I got a new K cup. The Craig? Okay, the whatever you call it, the Craig, the Astro Crag or Agro Crag or whatever the the guts trophy was. Um, you oh, do the K cups. I do the K cups. And, They're expensive, but one cup I can see it. Yeah, and I definitely bought it in bulk. But so I there's a donut shop which is a pretty popular brand, and they have mm. um, one which they call Sweet and Creamy. I think it is. And basically, the idea behind it is there's already like creamer and like sweetener and stuff in the cup. So you make it, and you don't need to add anything. So it lives um, up to the branding, then. I, I mean, yeah, I like it. Um, it's definitely, I'm sure, people who are coffee snobs, I'm sure they'll find fault in it. Um, and it's not, like, the best cup of coffee I've ever had. But for something where it's like I just put it in, set it and forget it for, like, a minute, and then come get back, and I don't have to, you know, have sugar or creamer in the house that I'm not going to use uh, What type often. of coffee do you prefer? Is it that... Donut shop K cup, is that your preference? I guess right now it is, yeah. My well, if I'm going to buy coffee, it's Dunkin'. But making the coffee at home, I like Starbucks or Krispy Kreme. But not everywhere sells the Krispy Kreme grounded bags. Yeah. Food Line does, but Walmart doesn't. Yeah. Uh, so if I'm ever in Food Line, I'll grab one of those. You said Walmart doesn't. They they do not. At I least like, my Walmart doesn't. I think, I think the ours does. They have the K cups, but they don't have like the maybe ground that's bag. What, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, my dad because my dad does the Starbucks, but I think he does the K cups. Yeah. See, yeah. I like the my two favorite Starbucks are the chocolate 
mocha. And then my, my favorite is the Morning Joe dark roast, but mm-hmm. Abby says it makes her heart feel like it's going to explode. That so, seems like an issue. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I haven't bought that one in a while. Probably getting back into my school schedule, I may have to make that one on the side, yeah. on, on the Craig. Uh, but uh, speaking of things around the house, let's get into a little housekeeping for this week. Housekeeping! I don't think you're sleeping. Housekeeping? Did you come back in an hour? Housekeeping, you want towels? I want towels. Need sleepy. Housekeeping, you want men for pillow? Please go away. Let me sleep for the love of God! Andrew Stokes, have you heard of this new app called Stardust? Uh, yeah, you told me about it. Did you know that we're on Stardust, the confirmed epic podcast? Yeah, you told me about it. <laughs> but com- in our pr- uh, illustrious pre-show meeting, but you can't fit the whole confirmed epic podcast, so we are just confirmed epic on the Stardust app. Those of you that don't know what Stardust is, this was introduced to me by Ryan Snelling of the Sight and Sound podcast. It's Instagram for movie reviews. So you download this app. You can only do a minute max reaction. You rate it one to five stars. You can't do half stars. Boo. It's one to five, you said? Yeah, yeah. And it's just a convenient, short-form way to get your opinions out there on movies. And it's really fun when you click on a movie and you can click spoiler reviews, non-spoiler reviews. There's even a section just for like trailer reactions, so you can do trailer reacts on there. Mm-hmm. And when I first heard about it, I was skeptical, and I just kind of observed, didn't participate. I did participate with a, a Detroit Stardust review on there, but mm-hmm. if you're a, a movie fan, even if you don't plan on reviewing, I recommend checking the app out. And if you do, add us on there at Confirmed Epic. Andrew, you're going to add Stardust to your Android phone. Uh, maybe I was going to complain about it, but now you've explained it more to me right now than you did earlier. And before I was like, w- you know, isn't this just, wh- why not just put it on some other video service we already have? But now that I see it's tailored to movie stuff, like the, and, the, the being able to, um, you know, sort by different things. When you play, things. for example, so if you went, you searched Detroit. Yeah. Unless somebody's done a Detroit review on there since I did mine this morning, I would be the first one that comes up. Yeah. And it like has the Detroit poster in the corner yeah. when you're uh, doing your review. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I recommend it. At least download it. Check it out. Listeners, Andrew, I th- I'll, I'd be fascinated to hear what you think about it. I'll check it out, yeah. Also, uh, shirts. So we sold a lot of shirts at the beginning of the summer. I got two new designs, and I'm debating when to drop these. I got to talk to Andrew Stokes about it. That's me. I, I I think I may drop them at the beginning of fall, maybe around Labor Day. Are we doing official uh, uh, Confirmed Epic Podcast uh, Halloween costumes? Or Halloween do, costumes. Do you like put out masks? Ooh, we should face? do a hokey Halloween horror shirt. There you go. That would be cool. And maybe get Jerry in on the design of that T-shirt. Just Jerry sitting in so, front of his laptop. I, should I reveal, at least talk about the two shirt designs that, I, that nah. I've created? No. Nah. Not yet? Okay. Not, yet. Not till it's ready to drop. All right. Then you can All just right. hit him uh, with it. Well, just, just look forward to that. We sold a pretty good bit of those shirts, and not just to my family. So I'll uh, be looking for that. Of course, I'll tweet that at the real Brad Bell on Twitter. Andrew Stokes, let's go ahead and get into what we've been checking out this week. Check, checklist, check. Double check, check enough checklist, check. Andrew, I checked out something that you and I have become increasingly interested in. Hashtag interesting. Yeah. Uh, lately, and that is Denny Villeneuve, a director that we really like. Is that like. his name? Yeah, that's the, like, officially how you pronounce it. It's not Villeneuve or whatever. Vill- Villeneuve, how I pronounced it for years. Denny Villeneuve is what he Villeneuve. prefers for the pronunciation since it's his name. I think I can Thought do that. Thought this was America. Uh, Freedom of dir- speech, I'll call you what I want. The director of Rival, the yeah. director of the upcoming Prisoners. Blade Runner sequel, Prisoners, and of course the director of Sicario. So I'd seen all of his movies except for Sicario. It was on sale at Best Buy for Sicario 15 your, bucks. Sicario has your uh, favorite actor in it too. Uh, yeah, John Bernthal yeah. makes an appearance. It really took, it takes me out of every film he's in because he just gets on my nerves so much. But <laughs> t- he's got a type in Hollywood, which is the scumbag asshole, and he once again plays that to perfection. So he's good at playing that one role. 
I hadn't seen him. Maybe Punisher, you could argue he's not doing that. So Sicario has uh, Benicio Del Toro. It has Emily Blunt. It came highly recommended from friend of the show, Will Maney. And, of course, it has the great Josh Brolin. Yeah. Here's what this movie's about. It is about the drug industry preying on America, but it deals a lot with the security of the border, drugs coming in from Mexico. Okay. And obviously it's politically charged. Um, it, it predated the Trump administration, but didn't predate his talks for running for the presidency, of course. It has an incredible opening scene. This is almost like Baby Driver, Andrew. This opening scene so thrilling and so like, what the hell? I don't know if the rest of the movie has a scene that good. Yeah. It has great scenes, but I don't know if any of them live up to that epic opening scene. Yeah. But Benicio Del Toro, because I've just been thinking about him as the collector in the MC, MCU. Like, yeah. This dude, such a fantastic actor. So intense. Uh, and what we uncover throughout the course of this movie is that the U.S. government is actually in deep with some people in the drug industry, and that mystery uh, ravels, unravels, and unfolds. I'm not going to say how, but the last 20 minutes, while not as breathtaking as that opening scene, yeah, it is some of the most intense filmmaking I have seen. And, I mean, that matches up with Prisoners. That matches up with Arrival. Have you watched Arrival yet? No. You still have my copy. You need yeah. to watch it, man. So. You know that's what happens. You lend me stuff, and I'll just never well, get to it. you've been pretty good about it lately. Like, yeah. Taxi Driver, you watched that really I've just been, I've just been busy. Like, I, I've seen, you know, other films. I've seen at least, a, you know, gone to the theater at least once a week here recently. Um, sometimes, you know, seen, like, double features. So I just you know and with that and work and whatnot I've just been busy. So I have you seen want... Sicario? I have not seen Sicario. No. When you watch Arrival, I'll let you borrow Sicario. I think it's streaming somewhere, so you may not have it to is? borrow okay. it. I'm pretty sure because it's been on my list for a while of a movie to watch. Um, see, my thing too is I just I like I like for it to be night when I watch a movie, and a lot of times you know with my work, um, most of the time I'm, I'm getting off pretty late too late to watch a movie right i don't feel like watching a movie um, especially something like sicario yeah and then like my days my days off it's like i'm i'm you know hanging out at night i'm doing things at night podcasting so maybe uh you know when the fall hits and it's darker yeah. earlier and it's maybe. football season so yeah but not every day of the week <laughs> luckily so. well it's sunday night monday night thursday all night. day sunday thursday so it feels like every day of the week and god forbid you really like college football too Luckily, I don't. I know. I mean, like, these people who are these football junkies who love both, usually people prefer college or NFL. I don't see how they do it. Yeah. And they got to be single or divorced or, or something to be able to put that much time into watching football. Retired, maybe? Re- I mean, but still, retired and a, a widower or something? I mean, maybe, but... Uh, Andrew Stokes. They're, maybe they married a significant other who also enjoys football. Abby loves football. Not that much. She loves college football, too. Yeah. But if I sit there and wa- tried to watch everything, she wouldn't be having that because you get your two days, Saturday and Sunday. Most people have those two days off. I do. Abby, of course, being a nurse, has a more flexible schedule. That's um, a nice way to put it. Yeah. But <laughs> that gives you... One day to really spend time together because Sunday I'm going to be watching football all day for the most part. Well, that's the thing, too. If she tried to watch every game, you wouldn't be having that either. So, yeah, I guess so. Especially college. Right. If she tried to watch every professional game and every college game, you'd be like, come on, we got you got to do something else. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Although her dad does attempt that. So, uh, all right, Andrew Stokes, what have you been checking out? Uh, I watched Saving Private Ryan. Now, you've seen this before, yeah. right? Yeah. What inspired y'all to watch this? Because um, you watched it with a friend. It, it might have been Dunkirk. Yeah. We, we were just trying to find something to watch. He and I uh, check things out like every Wednesday. Um, and uh, maybe it was... I, I, I more so wanted to see that opening scene, I guess, mm, that D-Day so scene. So intense. And uh, it, it, um, I was just like, hey, you want to check this movie out? Something to do. Yeah. 
That was it. This yeah. is one of the best <laughs> war films of all time. Yeah. This is <laughs> my, it's in my top ten of all time. Yeah, the the, the DA scene is uh, is very memorable and iconic from that movie. You know what I mean? But it's also I kind of it just seems long for what it is. Like I enjoy it, but well, D Day went on longer than like you know, right? But eight it, for the movie as a whole, it's kind of like, you know, what like, I don't want to say it's purposeless, you know what I mean? But for like the overall story of the movie, that's a very long scene for what really counts to these guys have seen some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think you're in the minority with that opinion. That's I probably I like it. I'm just the most epic war scene in any movie. It's great. I'm glad we have it. I'm just saying, as the, for the movie as a whole, it it is a to me a little questionable. I guess in college, Evan, True Love, and I were both history majors. Watched we, it every day. We took this class together, military history 2100, and the professor, Doctor James Hogue said, all right, class, we're going to watch a movie first thing. And he just played that opening scene of Saving Private Run. Of course, yeah. I had seen it. But uh, every time I see that scene, I think back to that moment in that class. So we say opening scene, and but I actually forgot. It's not it's not, it's not the opening no, scene. No, the opening scene is when he goes to that the grave. grave site, yeah. That And it comes back to that at the end, right? right? Yeah. Okay, it's been it's a while since like I watched Titanic it. Almost, like. I will tell you at the, after you've watched the whole movie, yeah. especially the first time you watch it, if you have not seen this movie, pause the podcast, go to Amazon, Order it on Blu-ray yeah. and add it to your collection. And if or you don't stream own it, it somewhere, it's streaming. It um, is. Where's I, it streaming? Hulu is where I watch it. Hulu. Okay. Streaming or that. I'm old school, I guess. This whole physical media stuff. I mean, it'll be you'll get a better picture, but I mean, whatever. If you, if we're gonna make you watch it right now, watch it on Hulu. But nobody's yeah. doing that anyway. Yeah, everybody's just listening to us. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know if everybody is, but some everybody people that's are. listening to us has not paused this to go watch. Uh, saving Private Ryan. No, uh, I will say that. Put keep your eyes on the road. That that scene at the end when they come back to the grave, I I tear up just about every time. Well, having watched it once, you know, what I mean, kind of knowing what's going on, that first the opening scene is now more meaningful. You know yeah, what I mean? no, I totally understand that. The first time you're kind of like uh, don't get the context. Yeah, I mean, you get it, but it's like. It's the opening scene. Yeah, you know, you're, this is setting things up. You're not sure who's who, what's going on, and of course they they the movie makes you believe you're watching somebody else early on. When yeah, in reality at the end of the movie, it's like plot twist. It's somebody else. There were uh, there was a, this movie I was talking to a colleague about. Of course, I wish I could show it to my kids at school, but it's such a hard R rate, and with our video policy, we can't. Yeah. Uh, but a colleague who retired this past year, we got to talking about movies and whatnot, and he said there were two movies he remembers, and he's, he was about 62 years old now, vividly that when he left the theater, you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. Saving Private Ryan and Schindler's List. Mm. And it's kind of that type of movie. I don't Schindler's List, I would say, is one of those movies I'm glad I saw it, yeah. but I never want to see it again. I think everybody should see it. And that kind of like that for you that you still haven't seen. That kind of matches up with Detroit, which I was going to talk about later. That's yeah. going to be our featured review in this podcast, Catherine yeah. Bigelow's Detroit. But there was another movie, Saving I, Private Ryan's, a little bit more rewatchable. I watched, I say. The, yeah, I watched the movie. Um, Saving Private Ryan is one of those movies too. You go back like every so often. And there's like somebody new that you recognize. Well, Vin like, Diesel's oh, in it. Their dude from Lost is in it. Which dude from Lost? Oh God, he he's not a main. He's one of the Dharma scientists who comes back to the island. There was a guy in this movie that I totally recognized, but I don't know where I recognize him from. So maybe that's it. Um, Paul Giamatti's in it, which I, I'm not sure I recognized him uh, when I watched him when I was younger. Vin Diesel, Brian Cranston's in it. Yeah. Um, what's a guy's name? I I know him for Friends, but he's more popular now for being on Stinky Pete, which I believe Brian Cranston's also on. Um, God, I forget the guy's name. Uh, been, but he, I can't he, remember. He played Phoebe's like half brother or something on Friends. Of course, Matt know? Damon, Tom Hanks. But right, we, I was thinking about. There's that one German guy. I was thinking about this movie kidding. this past spring because I I wanted to show it to my kids, but I couldn't, and. 
I got to thinking, Tom Hanks, man, had a run from like 95 to about 99 where it was, for, or, or Forrest Gump was earlier. Forrest Gump was 94, 95. So, Andrew, it was Forrest Gump, yeah. Toy Story, yeah. Apollo 13, mm-hmm. and Saving Private Ryan. So, I don't know if many actors have had a run of four. Those are all like confirmed epic, no doubt about it, films. Mm-hmm. And they're they're all so you have basically three that are historical epics, or at least Forrest Gump plays in the sandbox of history and time. I don't remember Forrest Gump that well. Really, I know. I've When's seen the last it? time you watched it? Probably when it came out. And I was young, so like there are certain scenes in that movie that my parents like accidentally hit fast forward on. Yeah. So it's PG thirteen. Yeah. But it's it's like it pushes the about as far as you can go on the PG thirteen envelope. Yeah. Uh, but ta- and then they have Toy Story in there. Yeah. I mean, uh, Tom Hanks. I, I, is I was because I was thinking the about that. As, as we're talking about these actors, I'm like, okay, there's Woody, there's Zordon, there's Groot, there's you know whoever else. What are you talking about? The, the, like you have Tom Hanks who's done Woody, Brian Cranston who played Zordon, oh, Vin Diesel who played Groot. I'm thinking of like these kind of like goofier roles they've played. Wow, um, that is crazy. That's yeah. right, Brian Cranston did play Zordon <laughs> this year. <laughs> uh, so another thing I checked out was I finished Legends of Tomorrow season two on Netflix. I need and, to watch that. Enjoyed it thoroughly. What I take away from the most, the most from this season, excuse me, two things, two characters. Eobard Thawne and Rip Hunter. Okay. Let me add one other Thawne, thing okay. that add to that is the the things they take part in throughout history in this season. They go to like feudal Japan. They go to World War One in the trenches. They take part in the Apollo thirteen incident. Mm-hmm. And there's a cool one of my favorite episodes is an Apollo thirteen themed episode where Eobard Thawne and Ray Palmer have to team up. Okay. To to get the astronauts back home, and it it just it it throws you in directions that you wouldn't expect based on the quality of the first season. Not to say there's not roll your eyes moments in this. I mean, there's a great. I really like the first season, so I, I think this is astronomically better. There's a great second, third, maybe fourth episode where it takes place all in the eighties. And Damien Dark is in, like, the Miami Vice car. He's wearing, like, this all-white suit, 80s music. I mean, there's just a bunch of cool little timepiece moments. Um, but is, did, go ahead. Does the Flash storyline play into this season a good bit? <sighs> Not really. What about the big crossover episode? I hadn't watched it. I skipped past that. And I'm glad you brought that up. So I finished Legends. Yeah. So I was going to go through and watch the Aliens. And I looked up the, aliens. that's what it's called. He, that the was the title, Heroes vs. Aliens, The Invasion. That's, that's the cross episode, yeah. crossover episode, okay. So Supergirl, Legends, Flash, Era. So I looked up the, the order of watching it. Mm-hmm. So the first was Supergirl, which is the only one I haven't watched. But I was like, well, I'll just watch this episode. Because I have seen like the Flash Supergirl episode from season one. Yeah. I started watching it. it I watched 20 minutes of it, and it was just like another episode. They were spoiling stuff earlier in the seasons, yeah. which I wanted to watch. You know, so I said, "All right, I'm not going to watch this." So I have not seen that, but I, I heard, did start Supergirl this week. I heard there wasn't much, from what I understand, there wasn't much of a crossover. Mm-hmm. Like the storyline went through all the shows, but like there wasn't a lot of like. I heard it was bad. Yeah, there wasn't. I think there wasn't a lot of people showing up on other people's shows. It was almost like another episode where they dealt with this kind of stuff. Because I know that they've already announced for the next season of all these shows, the crossover is going to be more involved, and it's going to be basically. I've like read four, that. Yeah, like they're actually doing like two nights of it. They're moving one of them up to. Like, so you got to catch up. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing with Legends of Tomorrow. I was thinking maybe I'll watch season two, but like, I don't want to have these other things getting in the way where I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, what's going on with Flash? You Why can watch season? Legends of Tomorrow without having any of the other shows. It wrong. seems like the most independent show. I yeah. They're all pretty independent. It's normally those, that, that crossover, that big crossover. Because, in fact, I think the last season I watched, there was something going I think it was Arrow. I was watching Arrow, and I'm like, why isn't The Flash helping out? You know, where is he at? Why isn't he paying attention to the news and coming over to whatever city? Or maybe, you know, or maybe it was the opposite. I don't remember. But I think Legends feels like the most separate, other than Supergirl, who 
Um, Which started out separate on CBS. So universe, yeah. So I will say uh, this, that Rip Hunter, I didn't care. I didn't like him. I didn't hate him in season one. Yeah. His arc throughout this season is a lot better. There are some annoying parts because he's kind of brainwashed and they got to bring him back to the group. Oh, okay, yeah. But the big bad here, it, you have the Legion of Doom. So mm-hmm. it's Malcolm Merlin, it's Eobard Thawne, it's Damian Dark. That's cool. They team up. They call themselves the Legion of Doom. It's really cool. They make matching t-shirts. It's cool. But uh, let, talk about Eobard Thawne for a minute because okay. when I think of him now, I think of Harrison Wells because he was the spoilers for Splash Season 1 here for the next four minutes or so because he was disguised as Harrison Wells. Yeah. I don't think of the guy who played Eobard Thawne, yeah. which is what we get here. Not Harrison oh, Wells, okay. but the guy that played Eobard really? okay. Thawne. Good actor, very yeah. menacing. Uh, his <laughs> So he played him in the flashbacks, though. Yeah. This is the same actor who played him. Yes, the same recently. actor. Okay. So, like, his participation in the plots of this season and how his battle with certain aspects of the feed, the speed force, excuse me, plays into it. So, the finale, where it takes place, how it takes place, mm-hmm. who it takes place against is freaking awesome. Because the, the next to last episode was, like, great and a half probably I'm like the finale is never going to live up to this and i'm watching the finale i'm 30 minutes in i'm like oh god this is lackluster but the final scenes of legends of tomorrow yeah. season two uh definitely more than made up for that so i, I remember, I'd recommend checking it out i remember I, watching season one and there was an episode uh that i was like this feels like this season finale and there's still like two or three episodes left. That's kind of how this season was, like okay. the next to last episode, the penultimate episode, yeah. if you will. I will say this. And so, I will. I will. Steel is in this season. The DC character, Steel. 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 S-T-E-E-L. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. You get it. I'm so, funny of you. I really had no idea who Steel right. was. So. Really? No, I didn't know who Still was. I'm like, still. Is villain yeah, he just stands Steel. still. Yeah. That's all. Well, I thought, maybe, yeah, he throws He's the people opposite or of the Flash. Yeah. Uh, no, Steel. Steel so is, most Vixen's famously, too, probably, yeah, yeah uh, the original Vixen, because you have the, uh, the Justice Vixen. Society of America yeah. at the beginning. Old school Vixen. Yeah, it's pretty cool, that stuff that happens, too, but... Black Panther's in it, too. No. So we know that Steel, yeah. played by Shaq, okay. everybody remember that movie? Yeah, okay, yeah. I, he's a historically black character. In the comics and Death of Superman, in this he's a white guy. What? And I, I mean, take this with Plot a, a grain of salt. I mean, I am a white guy. You, if you can't tell, but I I've, I was mad at first about that. I'm like this is blatant. This is the definition of whitewashing. Yeah. But the, the guy was a great actor and played yeah. the character very well. That being said, I I can completely see how people would be offended by that. Yeah. But That's, that seems dumb. All right, Andrew Stokes. One other thing I want to talk about, not spoiling anything. Game of Thrones, Season 7, Episode 4, The Spoils of War. Yeah. I will say this. It made me ponder the question, will there ever be a show this good on TV? HBO or otherwise? Because the last 20 minutes of this episode... I'm talking about from a cinematography standpoint, from a technical standpoint, from a story, from a character standpoint. I don't know if in a TV show I've ever seen all those elements come together for what I would describe as a perfect scene. And I can't wait to you. Of course, this is something that hasn't been in the books yet, so I'm not going to spoil it. I can't wait to you get to this in a TV show. I was thinking about last week to the Stinger, we were talking about you going to watch Game of Thrones, and you said, I'm going to yeah. watch the first season and see if I like it. Yeah. My advice to you was watch to the end. I know I kind of, not for this sometimes, but my advice to you is watch to the end of season two, Battle of Blackwater Bay, mm-hmm. then make your judgment because the the budget and what they're allowed to do from the first season to the end of the second season, and then from henceforth there on, is astronomically different. Okay. So I think it may not be a fair judgment just to watch the first season, which is something I usually am really against. Uh, But 
We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Stokes. We'll see. Um, I'll, I'll do that if you watch Iron Fist. Uh, no, I'm not watching Iron Fist. <laughs> it looks like you're not going to watch Game of Thrones. We'll see. I, I, we were talking earlier like, that I, um, I'm still watching Orange is the New Black, and I want to finish this, so it's like they keep pushing back. Like, okay, I'll watch... I'll subscribe to HBO now and watch some of this stuff uh, maybe next week or maybe yeah. next week. Well, you don't want to pay for it if you're not going to watch it. Is it a exactly. month free trial, though, on HBO? Um, I think there was at some point. I mean, I think it – I don't know if there is now. I don't know if that's – They're milking that those subscriptions since Game of Thrones is on. I'll just get, I'll just get your information and uh, just log into HBO Go, right? That's fine. I mean, sure. All right, Andrew <laughs> Stokes. Let's go ahead and move on to epic news for this week. Okay, Andrew Stokes, first news story for this week comes out of NBC, one of my favorite stations. Well, I prefer MSNBC. Shout out to Rachel Maddow. Love that show. Uh, So, NBC is in talks attempting to bring back shows behind the scenes of the such as The Office, yeah, 30 Rock, yeah, West Wing. This comes on the heels of them bringing back one of the most popular sitcoms of all time, Will and Grace. Now, let me preface this conversation that The Office is one of my favorite comedies of all time, mm-hmm. and The West Wing is just one of my favorite shows of all time, period, thanks to your good friend, friend of mine as well, Dusty Mode. Never heard of him. This is his favorite show. He talked about it like non-stop finally got me to watch it i watched it all one summer i stopped watching it really through yeah i adore this show i mean it is like a liberal masturbatory exercise uh but i love it Uh, it did drop off when aaron sorkin uh left after season four and rob lowe departed but what is your thoughts not only about this but this trend of revivals It, it we we had fuller house come back and I'm a big fan of Fuller House. Um, King of the Hill, by the way, just to throw some more news in there, is rumored to be returning as well. Fox is in talks with Mike Judge to start making new King of the Hill episodes. Now you, now you completely flipped me now. I was going to say I don't know about some of these show, shows that aren't that old coming back. Like I mean, It's been a while since Office, but at the same time, I rewatched it earlier this year or late last year. Yeah. There's there's a episode in the last season where they're talking about Fifty Shades of Grey, and I was like, man, like this was still on when that was getting big, so it really wasn't that long ago. Um, in the but the last season of, things, of The Office sucked, for the most part. Sure, it definitely had a quality drop off. Uh, when a Michael few left, in. yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how they bring it back. I mean. Well, with West Wing, I can completely see this, not as a continuation with the Jimmy Smith's presidency that happened at the end of West Wing, but just as a new administration. And I, here's what I would like to see out of West Wing, since the, out of all the shows mentioned here, even above King of the Hill, West Wing is the one I would like to see come back the most and the one I could actually see coming back the most. I would like to see not a Democratic liberal presidency, but like a moderate conservative presidency on the West Wing. Give us a new spin. Give us a new flavor. Uh, Maybe as a commentary, but I I wish Aaron Sorkin would come back, and I think that's the hopes and dreams of NBC. I know if he said he would do it, they would do it in a heartbeat. But just to kind of give us an alternative Republican party compared to what is actually happening in real life. Of course, one's fantasy, but still... I think that would be really cool. Uh, why did you not finish the... How far did you get in the West Wing, first of all? Two seasons. Really? See, I think probably... Let me just say this. You got to give it to the end of season two. <laughs> there, there's an episode in there that I that Dusty was explaining to me that yeah. kind of threw me off. I think, if I remember correctly, it was like in response to September 11th or that something. That one in the second season. It's, it's Isaac and Ishmael. It's the third. That's season? the name of the episode. I think because the show. I I, wa- I started watching another season, and it starts off with that episode that has like nothing to do with anything. Like the, if I remember correctly, it's season two that ends on this cliffhanger. Then season three opens with this, which has nothing to do with anything. And of course, I don't have any context that this is a September 11th 
special episode. Oh, that's you know one of I mean? the best episodes. I but was it, but it just like compl- I, I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. But it, it just threw me off. It's like, what is this? Like, what happened to the storyline? What like it almost seemed like it was out of order. You know what I mean? I, I want to watch. West Wing would be the perfect escape from the real world right now, even though it's a heavy political drama. And the, it, the, the music was a little dated. The music of that show. The intro or the, the background outro. music? Some of the background music, but especially the outro, it's like you'll have this super serious scene where like somebody gets shot and then it'll cut to the credits. It's like, it's like 90s. Like, it, the canteen, the cantina band coming in here? Uh, I don't know. It, it felt like some sort of like 90s, almost like a 90s kid show outro music. Or so something. what like, I love about this show is... Um, the music did. Josiah Bartlett, played by Martin Sheen, is basically a liberal fantasy as president because he is personally he's very religious and he believes in religious Martin liberty. Sheen or the character, uh, the character, okay. uh, President Bartlett, but he doesn't govern from that perspective. He right. separates the two, and he walks into a meeting. I guess maybe it's a press briefing. I can't remember. He was recently pushing some kind of social legislation. Maybe it had to do with gay marriage. I can't recall off the top of my head. But there was a, a right-wing reporter who was very conservative, Christian conservative in there. And, you know, when you a president walks into a room, whether it's Donald Trump or Ronald Reagan or Obama or whoever, you stand. And she refused to stand. Yeah. And uh, he asked why. And she said, I cannot stand for a sinner and somebody who's, obviously it was much more well written than what I'm saying, who's pushing this sinful legislation and all this. So he said, he started quoting stuff from the Bible Uh and showing his religious knowledge off to her. And, you know, would you rather you beat your wife two times a day? You know, all these old laws, some from the Old Testament, some from the the early New Testament. But that's a really memorable scene. Um I, I love that show, man. I absolutely love it. It's supposed it. to be a good one. I, I don't know. It just sounds... Um, that one definitely sounds like the most... The one that makes the most sense. Yeah. Of bringing it back. Um, the other stuff, like, what are you going to do with The Office? I mean, if Steve Carell's not coming back, which I, I'm pretty sure he's not, leave it alone. I mean, what's going to be? Just a reboot? I guess maybe new new something to kind of take the place that's left by shows like Thirty Rock, Parks and Rec, and The Office itself. Yeah, I don't know where uh, Thirty Rock left off. I, I never watched the whole thing. I never did either. I didn't like that show as much as everybody else. I love Parks and Rec, but I, I like Thirty Rock. Yeah, it, it was one of those I started watching it while I was, while it was still on TV. Um, like I I binged it on Netflix, so I watched it the first three seasons, and then there was no more seasons after that, and I haven't gone back type deal all right andrew stokes speaking of going back let's talk about flashpoint flash uh, flash is a time traveler okay so in 2020 this film's coming back uh coming out sorry i guess if he's going back in time anyway yeah uh we talked about this on the comic-con episode of two episodes ago about how this could be used to reboot the whole dceu listen to that to hear us discuss that proposition yeah but wonder woman is rumored for this movie. Which is... Well, which, keep going. Which is in line with some of the stuff that happens in the Flashpoint comic and things that happen not... Uh, there's a... Um, I can't remember the name of the crossover. It may be called The War of Atlantis, where basically the heroes... I know this kind of sounds like Civil War, and it kind of <laughs> is. The heroes split into two factions, one behind Wonder Woman one behind Atlantis and Aquaman. And they have this big war, and there's all these casualties, and it's one of the results of the Flashpoint. So my first thought is, are they going to do something like that? Or rather, are they just pigeonholing Gal Gadot into everything because they know this is the one thing that people genuinely love about the DCEU? Yeah, when we talked about a possible reboot for the DCEU, um, I said, well, you know, what are they going to do with Wonder Woman? Because people love Wonder Woman. They can't get rid of Wonder Woman. If she's in Flashpoint, it makes sense that maybe they could keep Wonder Woman and still reboot things in some hugely convoluted thing that they will not pull off, and it'll be awful. But Flashpoint's not going to be a Flash movie. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's going to be like Civil War yeah, kind that's, of was. That's what I was going to say. I said, you read my mind. Like Civil War is a Captain America movie in name only. Yeah. It's really an Avengers sequel. Yeah. And I mean, hell, it even introduces Spider-Man. But 
I, I'm excited to see where this goes. I mean, you can't get enough of Gal Gadot Wonder Woman, so. Well, D- DCEU may uh, try to change that. Yeah. <laughs> may try I to hope, prove you wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they, they probably will, knowing them. Uh, Netflix has bought Miller World. Miller World is not a subsidiary of Miller Lite Beer, but Dang. rather it is it's actually Millar, Mark Millar, the comic book writer behind actually the original Civil War, Kick-Ass, books like Nemesis, books like um, The Secret Service, uh, what's the name, Kingsman? Kingsman, yeah. Yeah, so... He has his own umbrella, and he has all these things like Jupiter's Legacy, and Netflix has bought this, and they're going to produce shows based on these scripts, okay. of com- or comics, I should say. But also, Netflix is going to start producing comics, which is weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not assuming they'll probably be at least digital first, if not all digital, but yeah. you're going to see comics with the Netflix logo over top of it. Yeah. Which is just mind blowing. The first part makes sense. The second part doesn't to me. Uh, no, it makes sense to me. Really? Well, what's out. your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I don't. I'm not familiar with um, um, any any of these works or anything. You know what I mean? So Nemesis would make the best Netflix show. It's basically if the Joker were Batman, and it is okay. batshit crazy. So. But, I mean, I like, yeah, I've liked the stuff from Miller that, that I've seen um, and read. So, cool. Like, like you know, I'm, I I like Netflix, what they do in general. Uh, not everything they do is a home run. But, so, that's exciting, too. Um, comics, you know, I don't really care. But I think it makes sense for Netflix. Um, but, overall, whatever. It makes sense for Netflix to try to branch out into something else. I mean, they... Uh, Facing more and more competition every they're, day. I, I heard the other day they're twenty-two million dollars in debt, <laughs> and yeah, the, I believe it. they're operating fine at yeah. that debt level. Uh, yeah. There, what's what's the name of the CEO? It's not Bill Hastings. What's Bill Hastings? Maybe Amazon. I can't remember. Uh, I the CEO remember of that. Netflix, but uh, he said they're very comfortable operating at that twenty million dollars in debt. He's like the U.S. runs itself with four trillion a debt. He didn't actually say that, but I mean a lot of these big companies run themselves a debt. Oh yeah, some yeah. of them will lose money. Well, they the paid to acquire these exclusivity things and whatnot, which I kind of want to parlay this into another news story uh, that, yeah. that relates to Netflix, and that's this week. Disney, I think debuting in 2019, announced their own streaming service. So they're pulling all their stuff off of Netflix. Yeah, I'm not sure when it's going to go off of Netflix. Maybe I mean, the they end have of a the pretty year. new deal, so I imagine it'll be closer to when their streaming service okay. launches. And so the way I understand this, that this is going to be the ultimate Disney streaming service, and not just with like Disney movies, mm-hmm. but ESPN and yeah. ABC. Which ESPN, of course, is owned by Disney. ABC owns, I mean, Disney owns ABC. And the fact that this is going to be your main platform to stream ESPN. I feel, I thought the ESPN was a different service. Like they're doing a Disney streaming service and an ESPN streaming service. Really? Okay. Maybe, maybe I misread that. I haven't looked too much into it. I was under the impression they were two separate things, but they're going to be coming out around the same time. So I want to ask you your initial feelings about this, but also I want to pose you the question, are there too many damn streaming services right now? Because it's getting worse and worse. It's gotten to the point to where if you get all these streaming services, like this Disney one, CBS, all access, Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, HBO, yeah. Which one's the exclusive one if you don't have it now? now? Okay, yeah. HBO Now. This is basic. So I'll tell you what I you pay. You may be paying more than cable at this point. I have direct TV mm-hmm. with my internet, with Sunday ticket, with HBO. My payment's 202 a month, which that's up there, but that's internet, Good HBO. Yeah. So if I dropped HBO, that would be 17 off my bill a month. If I dropped Sunday ticket, that would be thirty three off my bill a month. Okay. And I could downgrade my inner debt just a little bit and drop ten more bucks a month off there. But for the actual direct T V where I'm getting all these channels pretty much, yeah. It's really 
it's, it's comparable to someone if you had all these streaming services. Yeah. So are we going to get to the point where we're going to... Everybody's talking about cutting the cord. A lot of people have. But we're going to see almost the streaming platforms kind of fall in on one another. Yeah, well, I mean, that's why... Um... It was he was either the CEO of of HBO or of uh, Netflix. One of them basically said, you know, HBO needs to become Netflix before Netflix becomes HBO, or, or vice versa, and that's definitely the case. Because um, something like Netflix now, let's say I, I I came to this conclusion where it's like, okay, I'm spending more money on these streaming different streaming services than I am just if I bought cable. So I go to buy cable. You know what I mean? Um, I'd still want to have my Netflix. Because they're to a point now where they have all these shows that are only on Netflix. Like House of Cards. House of like Cards. Like, I have Netflix in yeah. addition to Direct TV, which is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I went, but I got it for House of Cards. And I probably could drop it right now. Because I picked, I, I'll go through phases with Netflix where I'll always renew it right when House of Cards comes back on. But see, there's like more stuff I'm, I'm, I'm into. Like, I'm, obviously, I'm into the Marvel shows. There's yeah. House of Cards, there's Orange is the New Black. Um, unfortunately, Marco Polo was canceled, but there was that. Um, Narcos is a good one. I mean, there's yeah. just little stuff that pops up, stuff I'll probably forget. Master of None, which is a great series. That it's like every month, it seems like they're putting out something. Like, oh yeah, I want to watch and that new season. They release these shows on Blu-ray, but they're expensive, and it's a long, long wait. And they release it on something else too. Um, because your dad was watching like, Net, uh, watching House of Cards on like, DVD, sh- wasn't he? Well, he was watching on like Showtime or Stars or something. He was watching on TV That's, on one of these channels. Showtime or Stars, really? I'm I'm gonna look it up. I, that's why I said I said you're wrong. Clearly, you're confused. No offense, Dad, but yeah, you're confused. Maybe you watched it. Maybe there's some sort of Netflix on demand that you have or something. But sure enough, he like showed it to me. I'm like, oh no, this is on this channel. Like it was an older season, but it was like, you know, that that, that was really confusing the, to me. The I didn't only know, I didn't know that was a thing. The only saving grace here is the e- exclusivity that these like CBS All Access is the only place you can watch Star Trek Discovery. Uh, which I wish it was just... I think the first episode is coming on just CBS. It's yeah. going to be on All Access as well. But uh, here's the thing, too. I've learned this from talking to other friends, and in particular talking to my father-in-law. My father-in-law is always talk, complaining about his cable bill. And let's face it, cable, satellite, no matter which way you go, it's expensive. But he's a huge sports fan, basketball and football. And there's really no efficient way to get your hands to clear sound, clear picture, sports content all in one place other than like a direct TV or a Spectrum or a cable vision or a, what's the other big one, a Comcast. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, you could get, uh, what's the thing, Sling TV, you had that at one point, but if you get all these streaming services and sling, I mean, you're easily getting up by the time you get to fees and taxes close to a hundred dollars. So, yeah. I, I mean, I don't see the point. In fact, I'm going to cancel Netflix after we get off of this podcast, just because there's nothing on there I'm watching and I'm Defenders. paying 14. I'm not going to watch defenders. I've already made up my mind with that and I'm paying 14 bucks a month for it. So that'd Gosh, be a way to subsidize awful, some of the awful shows costs for NFL Sunday ticket. Yeah, but, yeah I, got, I got to catch up on Supergirl and Arrow. Oh shit. And got time right. for eight Supergirl. episodes of the defenders. Now I'm going to catch up on Supergirl before I drop Netflix. All right, Andrew Stokes. My eyes just fell out of my head. I was uh, rolling I in so far you, back. While we're still on this topic, are you, so you have Hulu, right? I have Hulu. You have Netflix. You have Amazon Prime. Correct. That's the three you have. Yes. Okay. And I'm talking about picking up HBO. Yeah. So, are there any of these other streaming services you would think about picking up in the future? Not right now. I mean, if I had unlimited money, uh, I'd probably be CBS All Access as well. Yeah. Um, because that's like the easiest way to get some of those shows. But really, the only one I care about is Survivor. I'd like to go back and binge. You don't want to watch. watch Star Trek because you're a that was, yeah, Trek that's, fan that's the thing I was going to say. Uh, absolutely, absolutely not. It looks awful. Really? I'll, I'll check that out after I check it out in humans. Like they both look awful. They kind of look similar. In yeah, some they way. both look. I mean, no offense. I mean, you give if if 
if if it comes on TV and people are like, wow, it's wonderful, it's amazing, who knew? All right, sure, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, or if it's like shoved in front of me, you know, what I mean, somehow here's gonna be. But, the... it, but it's like I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch this, and I'm definitely not picking up CBS All Access to try and watch this. It just does not look. Good. Here's what I think we're gonna get sometime in the next year announced. Between... Are those supposed to be Klingon? What is what? When does this even take place? I don't know. I, I watched a trailer for this. I'm like, what is even happening here? But anyway, sorry. So I want to transition from Star Trek to Star Wars because I bet between now Ooh. and next San Diego Comic Con, yeah, we get an announcement that the live action Star Wars show that's been rumored forever will be available exclusively on the Disney streaming platform. And if that's the case, I would pay them 20 bucks a month just to have access to watch that show. What if it's crap, though? I mean, so far, and I mean, this could change when Han Solo comes out, uh, based on all the rumors coming out of that production, but so far there hasn't been a bad Star Wars Disney thing since Disney acquired. I mean, I guess some of the books have been a little slow, but I'm talking like theatrically, there hasn't been anything bad. Right. I mean, Re- if that comes Rebels out, is supposed to be good as well. Oh yeah, I've, I've watched. I'll, I'm caught up on Rebels. It's great. I actually like it more than Clone Wars. But I need to watch that. I need to make my transition to that. Speaking of Star Wars, so... uh, there was a big Entertainment Weekly spread that is coming out this week, but hit the internet uh, yesterday. Uh, in it, we saw a new Kylo Ren poster hit. Should a we? Couple... Should we spoiler warning before this? Uh, yeah, somewhat spoiler, but not major spoiler sure. for uh, The Last Jedi coming out in December. Uh, let's start with the poster. It's probably the least spoiler of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple months ago, this poster came out, or a series of posters came out that featured like Luke, Leia, and John Boyega in these red robes, almost similar to something the Imperial Guard wore that protected Emperor Palpatine. And there was not one of Kylo Ren, but that hit the internet this week. Yeah. First of all, looks badass. Cool poster. Second of all, especially for a studio teaser, second of all, does this mean anything? Is this marketing? I mean, it's weird, it's weird seeing them in these red robes. I, I can understand if we were just seeing like Kylo Ren in it. Oh, yeah. he's got a new Sith outfit or attempting to be Sith outfit, but... To see all of them makes me think, is there going to be something with the ancient Jedi Order? Well, especially Finn, too. Yeah. Is the more curious of the four. I Which, like. I guess he is. Is he Force-sensitive? I don't think he was shown to be Force-sensitive in Force Awakens, but yeah. mayhaps? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, we know Leia is, obviously. Yeah. Luke, obviously. Kylo, obviously. But And Rey. Yeah. 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 I don't I guess there was one of Ray. In, do you remember if there was one of Ray in these this red garb? Oh, I thought you said there was. I don't. I you know I avoid everything Star Wars. I, I so. think I think there is. Oh, this poster's badass. Kylo Ren's carrying the the lightsaber, his uh, tri saber to the side there. Uh, so here is the more spoilerific uh, tidbit of news that came from this uh, article. Apparently, in an interview with Mark Hamill for Entertainment with Entertainment Weekly, rather. Uh, it was revealed that Kylo Ren was, or maybe is, the chosen one. Yeah. The one that was supposed to bring balance and order to the Force. Not Vader, not Luke. See, my understanding, this is Jerry as well, is that the chosen one was Anakin Skywalker. And yeah. then when he killed the Emperor and embraced good, yeah. that he did restore some semblance of balance to the Force. Yeah. Now the question is... Is that true based on this? And not only that, but is Kylo not the chosen one? Now is with the training from Luke to Ray, is Ray the chosen one? Because we see the the whole poster for this movie, yeah. her holding up the second poster, the lightsaber, and the two kind of the red and blue converging, and there's the ancient Jedi symbol in one of the books in the first teaser that shows that that symbol of the force balance. Mm-hmm. So I I don't know where all this is going. I'm excited. I know I don't want to talk too much about it because I know you don't, don't want to be spoil, spoiled at all. But that's only, it's already too much. Too it's much. already like... This is too much? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, well, and it's all, it seems, also seems like surprising that Mark Hamill would be allowed to say such a thing. Like It seems like a huge spoil. This doesn't seem like 
oh, now we're going to explore this in the new film. This seems like that seems like a huge spoiler that Kylo Ren's the chosen one. Yeah. Like, Kylo Ren's a bad guy, but Kylo Ren's the ultimate good guy now? We know that? No, no, we, he was supposed to be the chosen one, but when he turned his back on Luke and... and How is he Bre- supposed to? He's a prophecy. He is the chosen one. But, or is he not? Because oh now they're God. saying Ray might be the chosen one. Who's they? Uh, when I say they, I mean Mark Hamill, I guess, because he he so actually he said maybe Ray's a chosen. Yeah, one. So he, he said he, he said he Kylo. This is this was the okay. statement I read it this morning. Okay, Kylo Ren was the chosen one. Okay, he turned. That sounds like a definitive statement, right? Yeah. He turned his back, killed the new Jedi Order uh, yeah. with the Knights of Ren. I mean, now that's alluded to in the Force Awakens, right? Yeah. yeah. That remember that scene was shown in the trailer of him with the other Knights of Ren, but that was never in the actual movie. Yeah. Uh, but to then say that maybe it's Ray. And so he said maybe it's Ray. Uh, all right. So you say he was the chosen one, which is a definitive statement. To maybe it's Ray now, which is this almost the complete like some, opposite. It sounds like some prequel level stuff. Where it's like almost like the, the chosen one is a title they dole out yeah. to like the most midichlorian uh, dense I, Jedi in the Order or something. I like, just think that I mean I still believe until I'm, I'm shown otherwise yeah. that Anakin Skywalker was was and is however you want to put it the chosen one. Yeah, I hope nobody else becomes the chosen one. I know it wants it'll add more meaning and credence to this new trilogy, but yeah, I totally like that was a full you know, package. Now, I, I guess there could be a new chosen one because um, Anakin's dead now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe know. there's a prophecy of the past passing down. Yeah. Apparently, there, Luke, let's say Luke, Mark Hamill talks about how Luke feels a ton of guilt. Yeah. And that's, he's very angst driven the first hour or so of this movie. Oh boy, angsty. Luke. And I, I just wonder. <laughs> Does he feel guilt because a certain individual was dropped off at Jakku being Ray? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I hope from this story. I, I that's the thing. I don't know what I hope for this story I want, either. I want there to be a, a good reason for Kylo to have turned to the dark side, though. Like that's something I want. He was to seduced explore. by Snoke. We know that, right? But then we, we've been Supreme told Leader that. Snoke. It's kind of like in the prequel trilogy where we're told Obi Wan and Anakin are friends. You know what I mean? And Snow's going to play a much bigger yeah, part in this Andy movie. Serkis. Serkis. I will say this. Hearing this news, mm-hmm. seeing this poster. Yeah. Because, I mean, the only thing we've heard about Star Wars the past month or so, or two months, is, uh, this summer, to be frank, has been the bullshit with Han Solo. Yeah. And then it, it finally just hit me, I guess, when I saw this badass Kylo Ren in the red robe, like, oh, shit, we are... Four, four, months. four months or so yeah. away yeah. from getting to see what happens next. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it. We still don't even have like a full-length trailer yet, right? Just that teaser Which trailer. is odd. I know you're not going to watch it, but do you not find that a little odd that we're yeah. in August, a week I into August? odd in general sense, not in, a, in a, what the Disney and Star Wars is doing sense. Like what they, do you mean? They don't have to release a single trailer for this. No, movie. no, they don't. But we know they will. Right. So it's like, but they're but they're waiting. I, I feel like they're building up anticipation. You know what I mean? Like people expect it. You know what I mean? I'm sure we'll probably have one by Thor. They got to put one out eventually. <laughs> That's... The casual, because some people, I, dude, so many movies that you and I will talk about. I remember Jumanji was the most recent one. Yeah. The day the Jumanji trailer hit. Somebody texted me. They're like, "Did you know they're making a re- a Jumanji reboot?" I'm like, "Yeah, I've known about that for a while." Like, you we know do I mean? get like, insulated in this little world of ours where everybody right. doesn't read IGN slash whatever yeah. every day and right. keep make notes about this stuff yes. for a podcast like I do and we do. I mean, when is um? I think it's who, December. Who's, who's or so. doing the first football game of the season? What station? It's not ABC. It's probably like NBC. Uh, yes, NBC. Because I, I was thinking, is there like a big sports game that's coming up? Oh, a big first, sports game, eh? Yeah, they do the first trailer for or something. <laughs> well, they they did show the last uh, Force Awakens trailer mm-hmm. on Monday. I mean, it hit the internet simultaneously. But they showed it during halftime of a Monday night game, I think, between the Giants and the Redskins. Okay. They're like two of my favorite things in the world, football and Star Wars. Maybe so they'll course. release it during the first one of this season. 
and they're doing a double header game. They're doing an East Coast, maybe between games. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you think they would have announced that already, maybe? Maybe. It's still like a month away. You wouldn't so. put that in the first Monday night game because people are going to watch that game more than normally anyway. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe second or third. But I, that's I, a I, good point. I could see that. Yeah. I always watch the uh, – I always try to watch that second game, for that double header Monday night football. <sighs> it's usually bad. Well, it's just it's crazy to see football on at like one thirty in the morning. You know what I mean? So it's just uh, like I'll be asleep. There's some novelty to staying up that late and watching live football. There was that game last year that I stayed up. So it was the Seahawks and Cardinals game. That game was six six, and ended in a tie. Yeah. Like it was. It was. I love defensive football. But it was a mix of just watching Russell Wilson fail time and time again that yeah. I enjoyed, and there was some good defensive football thrown in there too. But yeah, wasn't there a super early game last year? Like when there like was those London? British games. Yeah, yeah and it took place super early, right? Like seven thirty like hour time. Yeah, yeah. See, that was a novelty it's like too. Like getting up, and trying to watch the British Premier League or something yeah. like that. Oh, I know. I can't. I want to watch Premier League, but it's just so difficult. I mean, you can watch them. They they replay them later in the day. You just gotta. I avoid know. Well, then the I also well, the problem is I don't have like I think it's all on like uh, NBCSN. And yeah. It's like I don't have access to that. Who's your Premier League team? Because don't you kind of watch Stoke City, baby? Didn't they win at all last year? Surprisingly, Did they win all? yeah. They win it all? No, they, I don't think so. I don't know. Apparently, I they don't came out. Of, they came out of nowhere. It was like uh, they had. Stoke no, City? no really? chance. I may be wrong. Like Man U or I'm gonna say I'm an Arsenal fan, just because that's the fans of uh, Big Ben's British Pub. That's who they're fans of in Charlotte. Uh, while he looks up Premier League champions, I'm gonna just move on to who won it. Do you know? Uh, I'm looking it up. All right, I'm gonna move on to our last bit of epic news. So we got Domino last week. This week we got the reveal of Josh Brolin as Cable. Cable is going to appear in Deadpool 2, 2, which is coming out June 1st, 2018. Did you see this picture of uh, Josh Brolin as Cable, Andrew yeah. Stokes? Yeah. He looks jacked, first of all. My God, he's ripped. Uh, which is crazy, because you probably won't even see that in Thanos, because it would be mostly CG and mocap. Maybe that's why he's not wearing all that armor and stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh I mean, it looks cool. It's Josh Rowland. He's a great actor. I'm excited for Deadpool 2. I'm not... I like Cable more as a character than I do Deadpool just because he usually played a bigger role in the general X-Men stories. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it was nothing that got me as excited as Kylo Ren in that red robe. I'll say that. Cable's kind of the same way with Domino to me. Domino is a little more obscure, but it's just one of those characters that people always talk about and want to see more of, and I don't, you know... I know a little bit more about He's very Domino. Domino. 90s character. Lots yeah. of pouches. Lots of pouches. Let's go ahead and open up our pouch to Rapid Fire this week. Andrew Stokes, Rapid Ready? News. Here right. we go. Go. Yeah. Pacific Rim 2 has a release date. It's been yes. moved. March 23rd, 2018. Is the new release That's the date. new release date. I think they moved it back like a couple weeks. I think it was going to come out in late April. Uh, but They moved it up then. Yeah, moved it up. I'm okay. sorry. My bad. So I know we're all excited to see John Boyega in that movie. In Pacific Rim 2. <laughs> I don't know if I am. I like the first one, but I'm not. I had no idea he was in Pacific Rim 2. Really? Yeah. He's yeah. the main... You didn't see the tarot? It was a bad teaser trailer. Again, I don't care at all about this movie. I didn't like the first one. Really? I not. Yeah. I knew you didn't I, like love it, but you I distinctly it. disliked it. I didn't hate it. It's just... Yeah, it's one of those things that... Since it's come out... I don't know. It, it, it just annoys me. The fan base kind of annoys me with this movie. The Jerry. So it's... Which is people enjoy. <laughs> it's giant robots versus giant monsters. What don't you like? What's there not to like? It's the like, Charlie Day stuff was a bit much. The movie, Looking back the movie on that was movie, fine. Like I, I didn't. I don't remember hating Pacific Rim, but everybody else like really dug this film, and it was just like I was like, oh, I didn't really care. 
what'd you expect? It was giant monsters versus giant robots. Like, what'd you expect? And it's like, fucking, like, a better movie. Pardon my language. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, let's race ahead to okay. uh, Batman. Oh, uh, well, that... I know this is supposed to be rapid fire. <laughs> Why'd yeah. they move it up? You'd think they'd move it back to April. Like, like, uh, I but, don't know what was coming out. Ready Player One's coming out in March. What's coming out in April? Yeah, you don't know that pushed it up? Yeah, I don't know that why. seems odd. I just made that for rapid fire. I figured we'd I'm be moving on from it. Right now. Forget it. All right, Bat- Batman's going to temporarily be given the Flash's ability in the DC storyline Red Death out this September. Seems... Like a liberal use of the word news there. Uh, uh, Bat- <laughs> all right, Batman doing everything in the spotlight at DC. Not yeah. a surprise. So, uh, Speaking of DC, Wonder Woman has been given a digital HD release date on August 29th and a home video release date on Blu-ray, standard DVD, and 4K for September 19th. So okay. I will be purchasing that, Abby. That's one pre-order she definitely would not cancel. Uh, Andrew Stokes, will you be picking up Wonder Woman? I will not, Brad. Okay. I just don't pick up that many movies. I See, you know I, mean? I like, had kind of gotten off of it, just picking up like big ones, but with yeah. that 4K player, I started picking up yeah, you're in it. a, a you're little in it more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my physical media days were over, but I, I just I just cannot get away from it. Uh, the Cree are rumored for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, so... We've had the Inhumans on there. They were shit. Why not have the Kree on there now? And they can be yeah. shitty as well. Whoa! Is is the Inhumans the TV show? Is that the same Inhumans that were gonna be on, that are on Agents of Shield? No, the ones on Agents of Shield. I said they were shitty here, but they were actually at least from what I've seen of this Inhuman show, which I have not seen it. Uh, they were a lot better. But than, I mean, we're we're. Black Bolt? No, whatever. no, no, no. So these are just like random yeah. humans? Yeah, like the Terrigen Mist had been released and people were discovering their powers okay. and S.H.I.E.L.D. was trying to rein them, rein them in. I mean, I talk about that tongue-in-cheek, but it really was a, a maybe their best season. I heard Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got better. It, it did. It's it hard re- to It like... got progressively better. It started out kind of shitty, but... Um, it's one of those I wouldn't mind checking out one day, but there's just so much stuff out now. Yeah, there's it's like, too it's much. It's hard to be like, yeah, I'm going to... It's back to your Iron Fist thing where you've heard such bad things about Iron Fist. You don't want to get through it just to watch Defenders. And it's like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't want to watch a whole season just to get to a better season in, two or, in season two or three or whatever. Speaking of adding more TV shows, uh, YouTube Red yeah. is adding the Karate Kid TV show starring Ralph Macchio, the original Karate Kid. And what's his face? Uh, Billy Zap. Zapsic, Billy yeah. Zapsic, Cobra Kai, yeah, the bad kid. guy uh, yeah. from uh, the original Karate Kid. I love Karate Kid. I even saw the the new one that was the Jaden oh, Smith Jane. one. And yeah, did you see that one? I did not. I heard it was it's actually, actually right. really good. Really good. Uh, wow. The first two, I love the first two Karate Kids. The one with the girl. I'm not trying to see the second one. Not trying to be sexist, but the one with the girl is not that good. Oh, why? Uh, because the a girl. girl one, no, it's just it's just <laughs> not. It's actually. I, maybe I need to revisit it because you know who the girl is? Is Hillary Swank is the female karate oh, yeah, kid. I remember this you remember now. that? Yeah. Uh, so speaking of female empowerment, Wonder Woman has <laughs> hit 400 million domestically and 790 million internationally yeah. uh, at the box office. So uh, interesting. Uh, Marwin Kinzari has yeah. been cast as Jafar. Okay. Have you heard of this guy? Have you heard of this one? Stop me if you've heard this one, guys. He's been her, the remake, not yeah. the original from the 1960s. <laughs> ben Hur was one of JFK's favorite movies. Did you know that? The remake? No, <laughs> the original. Uh, he's also was in The Mummy, and he's on the upcoming remake of Murder on the Orient Express, which also stars Josh Gad. Yes. Who was in The Mummy? Uh, or who was he in The Mummy? No, who he was, was the, mummy? the male mummy from the beginning. Oh. Who, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he All was right. the male mummy. You're talking about the remake, the, the current Yeah, mummy. yeah, the one okay. we just saw with okay. Tom Cruise. So yeah. the female mummy, spoilers right. for the mummy, Sophia... kills the male mu- uh, Butella. Yeah. Yeah. Sophia Butella kills the male mummy. Mm-hmm. That's the one she kills. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind of very s- memorable. Character. I think Aladdin <laughs> may be the first big live action misstep. I, I don't know. It seems like this doesn't. This is just. I, I don't really know the actor. 
type thing. So I can't really like I'm well I'm super excited. Well everything with Lion King's like, oh my god, this sounds awesome. Yeah. Everything with Aladdin's like they're having trouble with casting because they're going for it, which I think they should be. I'm not arguing yeah, that. They had a hard time finding Aladdin is all. And Jasmine, who they got the Pink Ranger to be. Did they have a hard Naomi time with that, Watts. or they just took their time? No, with no, it? they had a hard time finding that one as well. Well, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to find your, you know, your love interest when you can't find your lead. You know what I mean? That's Cause, true because you want chemistry. That's that's right. a very good. But I mean, point. they got what Will Smith, um, as Genie, right? Yeah. And then have they announced uh, uh, Iago yet? No. I mean, that could be another famous. They need to get the I mean, same it, guy. Who's the guy that plays Iago? Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of those iconic <laughs> voices that just has to return. Well, I mean, yeah, but you can say that about some other characters that they've changed in these movies. That's true. But I mean, but I mean, it could be it could be like Jungle Book where they they surround this kind of unknown with all these known. That's true. You know I mean, I, there's nothing about this yet that that sounds bad and they've done really? such a good job with these other ones that it's like i give you the benefit of the doubt yeah, of course I when i say they've done such a good job i you mean, mean cinderella I've, right <laughs> I, I mean only beauty and the beast because i haven't seen any of the other well, ones still I, haven't even seen jungle what jungle book was freaking awesome because i liked it better in beauty and shout the beast. out to my dad he took my nephew to go see jungle book uh, one day when I was working and I was totally going to like take my nephew to see this. So what has there been? There was Cinderella. Cinderella. Which my sister-in-law There was, was something before that. If you count the Wonder Alice in Wonderland movies. Yeah. Which I'm not I sure did. if that's in the it same made one. A bil- it made a billion Maleficent. dollars. Oh yeah, Maleficent. Yeah. Which I guess. What season- about Snow White and the Huntsman or was that a different studio? I think it's a different studio. Okay. It was that was what's a Kristen Stewart and, and uh, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth right? yeah. yeah, he played Thor. I mean, uh, the Huntsman. Uh, Cinderella was good by all accounts, but I t- at the time I didn't like. It didn't seem like a movie I needed to see. Cinderella is so bland. A story. You saw it? No, I'm talking oh. about the story in general. Yeah. Um, but I mean, after after the success that Jungle Book has had and Beauty and the Beast was fantastic, I kind of want to go back and watch Cinderella now. Yeah. Like is it? I don't even know what it got. Did you buy Beauty and the Beast on Blu-ray? I figured you would, as much as you love that movie. No, but I mean, I might. It's, that might be one I buy. Some I'd Black some Friday buy. Yeah, but it's, that's the thing. I, I mean, Good I love times. that movie this year. And yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't bought it. All right, uh, Daniel Craig is who? rumored for two more Bond films. Yes. Uh, so it looks like that Christopher Nolan Bond's gonna. Wait, um, oh. that surprises me too more because I've heard so many ramblings that the next one would be his last one. You know what? You know what they probably did? Probably offered him a lot of money. Yeah, that, I probably changed. That'll do it. Enticed him. <laughs> uh, uh, let's take a toy break here. The, toy uh, break. We don't talk much about toys on here because that's yeah. more barbecue seventeen thing. Jerry yeah. Reed, but. We're both big Power Rangers fans. They've been doing these Power Ranger legacy items, some prop replicas, uh, some action right. figures. But the next wave is going to be Zeo. Zeo. And uh, it's going to be a Zeo Megazord build a figure. Uh, They've also teased Zio. the prop replica of the Gold Ranger staff, which was a toy that I loved as a kid. Oh, I used to beat so many kids with that. Uh, really? No, I wish. <laughs> Did you have it? No, but that seems like a type of toy you could really whack somebody yeah. with. <laughs> Man, it, I I will I think that I will be picking up the Gold Ranger. I picked up a figure here and there, like I picked up the Green Ranger in the Legacy line. I had the Did red, yeah. I, I had the Red Ranger before Cookie ate it. Uh, <laughs> and I think I will just pick up the Gold. You really Ranger. like the Gold Ranger? I did as a kid. I I, I think maybe so, looking back, not as much. When did you stop? You stopped watching around space. I stopped watching before, like, and I should have stuck it out. Space was after Turbo, right? Yeah. With the right before they got to the end of space. So about the Ninja Turtles episode, I dropped. That's, out. that's fairly early on. So. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I didn't finish space. Yeah, Although I, I like those costumes. I like the space costumes. Space costumes. They had like the Silver Ranger and stuff. There was you some know, cool stuff going on. Looking back at Power Rangers lore. Ninja. Um, <laughs> what has kind of surprised me is that most people who grew up watching the original show and kept watching, a lot of people stopped at space like you did. Well, I mean, there was a natural break. Point. Yeah, yeah. They started doing that as... Each season's a different crew. But for most people, out of those first couple seasons, Zio's their favorite. Zio's good. Which, that theme song, man. I love it. Oh, man, it was great. Oh, and the new command Star center. Oh, remember the reveal when the uh, 
the suits were back there and like yeah. museum glass with, oh. like the batman esque yeah. almost yeah that was so cool do you remember when they replaced zordon in alpha 5 i know alpha but alpha. that was store they, they called it alpha 6 right alpha 6 and then because alpha 5 went with zordon they left and went somewhere else and so they brought in alpha 6 and that woman who was like a i dream of genie looking she had you know what i mean so zordon wasn't in zeo at all no, he started out in Zio, but partway through he left. Okay. And then right. I think that's who was there, or maybe they maybe they left during Turbo. One of the two, because well, they, they use a, Turbo. They, they use the same command center. Um, and then and Turbo uh, sucked. That's most people's least favorite. Yeah, it sucked. And then um, the space they had the spaceship. Yeah, which was not, it was which also the Megazord. Right, but like there was there was no like was the, cool their leader Megazord. was basically the Red Ranger. Yeah. They left Justin on Earth to do his homework, I guess. Thank God. <laughs> Best decision <laughs> they TJ, ever made. TJ got demoted to Blue Ranger or whatever. So. Oh, man. I just, I do remember kind of being iffy about the Machine Empire. Mondo was the guy's <laughs> name, the leader of the Machine Empire. But you yeah. know what I really like? Prince Rocket. Yeah, when he came on there. Yeah. There's an episode where Tommy gets stripped of his powers, and he's teleported to this other dimension. <laughs> and he has to... This is Zeo? In Zeo, yeah. It sounds like Rangers. It sounds and like he has Morphin. to fight... Uh, is it no wait wait Prince, Prince Rocket's the little one I'm guy. talking about the older the guy son. who comes in yeah, what's Prince, his name I don't know Prince Caspian I don't know I don't know well the the older the yeah the yeah, son the old. Sprocket was he was comedy throwaway but right. the older Prince comes in with his wife yeah and he's actually like an actual threat yeah kind of like how uh, Rito was when he first came in or but Z the Z Prince or never something. becomes like blatant comic relief at least off the top of my head I could be wrong it's been yeah. a while since I watched this, uh, I actually got the box set this past Christmas that goes through space. I think it was Zeo, Turbo, Space, and maybe even Lost Galaxies in that box set. I have since to break the plastic on that. I wonder why Lost Galaxy would be in there. I don't know. There, there is some crossover. Even though it was supposed to be a clean break, there was some crossover between Space yeah. and Lost Galaxy. Um, from what I recall, I didn't really watch Lost Galaxy though. I just remember but like looking back at it, hearing about Mondo's older son. There's yeah. a really awesome episode where Tommy has to fight him one on one. I don't know. It's it's actually I was looking at when the movie come out. There were a lot of top ten lists for Power Rangers floating around the internet. And one the Power was, Ranger episodes. Yeah, th yeah. It, this was in the top ten episodes. So okay. I guess it is reasonably like you know what I really want is a, a really good, and I'm trying to find it, mm -hmm. Power Rangers podcast. Because I listen to Teenagers with Attitude. Why well, find one when well, we can make one? Because I'm already doing a Ninja Turtles Introducing. podcast. Uh, <laughs> but, so Teenagers with Attitude is, is, they're funny. They're entertaining. But they're more making fun of the show. And sometimes they take it seriously. You want a serious Rangers? I want a Rangers? serious, and I think there has been some, but they're, they've, they're like at space or Jason something. Jason David Frank needs to do one. Oh, can you imagine? That'd be awesome. Like how much money he would make. He's, off he's that? reviewing day of. He's talking about day of the dumpster. And he's like, yeah, I wasn't cast yet, and I wasn't there, and I don't know what happened behind the scenes. You <laughs> know who's doing a wrestling <laughs> podcast now? Eric Bischoff. Is he really? Yeah, yeah that makes so sense. I actually would, might download an episode, even I'm not a big. Have you listen to Stone fan. Cold's podcast? Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I listen to clips. He's of hilarious. It. Yeah, when something big happens, I listen to like clips of it and stuff. He's he's good. All right, we could talk about Power Rangers all day. I'm gonna podcast. move through this real quick. Stephen Machete, who is the director of the It remake, is going to attempt. He's in talks to take on Pet Cemetery next. Okay. Uh, now I was hoping it would be the second It movie. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Pet, maybe it, he means after the It continuation. I don't know. Pet Cemetery is scary as hell. Yeah. Uh, that one freaked me out as a kid. After that, he'll be doing Langoliers. I don't know what. Uh, uh, you know what they need to do? Salem's Lot. Because this is one of the most beloved Stephen King novel, and the only t it has a TV movie. Kind of like It did. And there's another TV movie I was getting ready to say they should do, which is uh, Storm of the Century. I've never seen it. Oh, is that so a Stephen good. King book? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was. I actually give me what I want, and I'll go away. It's I, such a great. It reminds me of Thirty Days of a Night. It's like this town that this snowstorm cuts them off from like the rest of the world, and this weird guy shows up. And I yeah, really want to read in a short, which doesn't mean I'll read it fast. The Dark Tower 
first book. Um, just to see, because that movie is so obviously not hearing a, good things about that movie. Oh yeah, that yeah movie it's Stephen is King, Storm of the Century, uh, is Stephen King. I, I have mean, it. I have it on DVD. Where part one's on one side, you flip <laughs> yeah. it over to watch part two. So if you want to borrow it, I will say this: that the Stephen King Dark Tower book series and the comic series, it's like a continuation of it from mm-hmm. Marvel. They're really beloved. Oh yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I read the book series absolutely. Yeah. Before, have yeah. you ever read it? No, no, no. Yeah, but I would like to just read the first book just to see what what's there. Yeah, because based on what I've seen of the trailer for this new movie. That was definitely not what I was thinking the Dark Tower would be about. Yeah. So. All right, let's move along uh, here. We talked about Power Rangers earlier, going back earlier in my childhood. Darkwing Duck is going to cross over with the new Disney XD DuckTales, which is woo, pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big Darkwing Duck fan. Were you a fan? Uh, no, I never watched it when I was growing up. Oh, man. It was one um, of those Disney shows. We didn't get Disney. No, so. but it came on, like, ABC. I also didn't watch ABC for some reason. I was a Fox kid or Nickelodeon kid. Me too, kid. but, like, for what whatever Herman reason I watched, on? I don't know. I always watch Pee Wee Herman, Where's Waldo, and... Car- Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? I watched that a little bit. Yeah, that was a big one. Not huge, but it was pretty big. I don't really remember watching, like, like um, Street, uh, Street, Street Sharks Shark. and... Biker, Mice from Mars. Like, oh. these, are all, these are all shows that were big. Rip-offs of the TMNT. Toe. I remember all the toys, but like I never remember watching the show. Speaking of big, there's going to be a mega Star Destroyer in The Last Jedi that's going to be the home of Supreme Leader Snoke. I didn't look at the images, but they're out Star there. Star Destroyer. Yeah. I, no, not Death Star. Yeah, I was thinking Death Star. I was like, you're kidding me, right? You've got to be kidding the me. The fourth Death Star? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Colonel Miles from one of your what favorite are... movies, Avatar, is returning for all three sequels despite being killed in the first movie. Is, let me get, we're reaching Transformers levels. Let's just, guys, let's just keep in mind, <laughs> no matter what you want to say about Avatar and all this stuff, this is James Cameron. Who made Aliens? Who made Terminator 2? Let's, let's keep True the faith lies. alive. Let's keep Abyss. the faith alive. Well, I know, but I'm talking about these big action sequel. You yeah. know what I mean? People love these movies, these sci fi uh, action sequels. So, True Lies is action. I know people love to crap on Avatar. It's ha ha ha. It's the, still the fun thing to do. But, dude, I'm. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, I, and I mean, it sounds almost like Star Wars prequel level, like what is going on? Um, but, man, I'm. I, I'm not. Can they just throw hell in there somehow? Just please. The, the, the worst part, though, is how long it's taken. We talked about. I don't think we're ever gonna see these movies. To we, be frank, we talked about. We'll see uh, the end of Game of Thrones, the books, before we see <laughs> oh, yeah. Avatar two. Um, we talked about either on the podcast or or just amongst us about Avatar and its cultural impact. Yeah. Uh, in pop culture, really. And how it doesn't really live up to Star Wars and stuff. And I, I think part of that, though, is because it's taken so long to get a sequel. That's an unattainable like, goal. Can you imagine yeah. Can you imagine if Star Wars came out? And granted, we weren't you <laughs> yes, know, around then. But it came out, and then Empire Strikes Back is like over a decade later. Yeah, it, it kind of loses its buzz at that point. Yeah, so it's like, man, I just... I don't know. Speaking, I'm, ex- I'm excited to return. I- I've been meaning to watch Avatar. Return to Pandora. You can go to Pandora Land in Disney World now, which makes no sense why that's at Disney World, considering Avatar was Paramount, I believe. We can go to the Paramount. There, those theme park rights are all over the place. I know. Those, it's like, crazy. I'm not even getting into that. The <laughs> Mother trailer won. We're not going to play it or really get into it, but it debuted. I didn't watch it because I'm sold on that teaser that we watched last week. Oh, okay. That, but we got confused. the first full Mother trailer. Did you watch it? I did not. No, I, I guess I must have been confused and thought it was still that teaser trailer. I didn't no. realize it was a separate trailer. No, it was like a two-minute trailer. I'm sold um, on it. I'm, I might watch it. Yeah. Cause I, I'm... I plan on seeing this movie, but I'm still uh, still somewhat curious as to what it is going in. But I don't Honestly, know. I just want to be shocked. I don't want to know what I'm watching. Yeah. I get in there. All it's right, like fine. I'm not going to watch it. You talked me into it. Um, speaking of things I will watch, Batman 66 is getting his final performance from West as Batman in the direct-to-DVD cartoon Batman vs. Two-Face it comes out October 17th. Of course, Burt Ward, Voice and Robin, and Adam West had recorded this before he died. I watched the first animated one. It was really good. Yeah. So, I, I'll yeah. let you borrow it. I, I will be picking this up. 
Uh, I'll, see, I'll add it to my stack of things I'm borrowing from Sicario <laughs> and that. And Sicario, and, uh, the Prestige. You arrival. have Prestige. Yeah. You have those two. Yeah. See, speaking of things, it seems like they will never arrive. CBS is reworking the How I Met Your Dad pilot. Apparently, the pilot was terrible. They didn't want to give up on the premise of the show. So they're starting from scratch. It's supposed to be following the mother. Yeah, and um, Tag Ryan is supposed to do the voiceover. Okay. Which I, I want to see that. I, I do. How Much Your Mother is one of my all time favorite shows. I still I, hate I know the I'm, ending. Really? I, well, I, I, I know. I, I understand that. And Evan hate hates where the ending, went. too. I like that last episode for the most part. But the last season, the way they did the last season, and then the way their story ends, I am just was not a fan of it. Yeah, and I don't want to spoil that now. Right. But I, it is something one day I would like to talk about on a podcast. Um, T- Ted turns out Ted's maybe the chosen we can one do and he murders a everyone. topic on worst TV show endings or something and talk about that. Okay. And Lost, which I love. The and Lost. I love, I love the ending of Lost, but I mean, it is a very Special polarizing. Special episode, the worst TV show endings of all time, a close study of the TV show Lost. Um, I, I like the speaking final Speaking of, of TV shows fine. ending, Modern Family will end after 10 seasons, so two more of that. I'm a newcomer to Modern Family yeah. when Abby and I moved in together after we got married, which has been about three years almost now, hard to believe. It's one of her favorite shows, so she she got me into it. I, I like it. I mean, I, I hate I missed some of the better parts of the series. Yeah, that's my thing. Is like I was well, I I picked up on season two, um, and then watched seasons two two and three, or maybe two three and four, and then for some reason maybe it left Hulu, or I don't remember why. I just see my parents watched this, but I didn't watch it. I liked it. I, I I'd like to go back. Maybe if it's on Netflix or something, it would be one to pick up. Yeah. That, that, I, that is, uh, it, it has become very gimmicky. Now, the gimmicks work. They're freaking hilarious. But it's almost become like Seinfeld in a way as mm-hmm. far as the means to the end of like the, the punchline of the show. Interesting. Which is so well done, I can't complain about. But apparently the show had that as an element that didn't revolve around that gimmick so much in earlier seasons. Okay. Uh, that's just what I've heard. I you haven't ever, seen early. I started watching season six, I think. Okay. Um, have you ever? Did you ever watch uh, Last Man Standing with Tim Allen? Uh, my dad really liked that show, so he would have it on back when I lived at home, but yeah. not much. Uh, I was wondering if it was worth checking out because I know it got canceled recently. Because it was a conservative <laughs> show. He, uh, I, uh, we won't. Get nobody, into that. nobody came out and said that, but I mean, there's, there's definitely. It was odd that it got canceled when it got canceled. So, Agreed. I mean, so I don't know. The, I was just wondering the election 2016 <laughs> season. I was just wondering if uh, that was if you had seen it, whether whether it was worth checking out. I mean, it's, that's what I love. That's what I want, man. The, I want the the Fuller House version of Home Improvement. That's what I want. I do too. I actually we were talking about that on Technodrome Tales the other night. Oh, really? Home Improvement. Yeah. Neither one of them really watched it. I was like, uh-huh? Uh-huh? <laughs> all right. My friend Philip, uh, should we continue just got with this married. review? I don't think so, Tim. He uh, <laughs> he was a huge Home Improvement fan. Like he had the box set that was the toolbox. Oh, I wanted that. And so brought bad. it with him to college. Yeah. And he would sit there. <laughs> and he we so from our fir- our first year at UNCC, he started on episode one, and yeah. by like the end of the year, we had finished the show. And I didn't watch every just episode once. with him. Yeah. But we would. Like when we would come in from class breaks and have lunch in the dorm, we would watch Home Improvement. Yeah, and we would. He loved Married with Children too, so nah, we'd watch. Never got into that. Uh, I've seen it. Just I don't get it. There's a point in the show with Married with Children where uh, Marcy, mm-hmm. Peggy's friend, marries a new husband, mm-hmm. Jefferson, mm-hmm. and then Steve's her first husband. So. Married with Children fans break this show. In the, there's the Steve era, which is like the first four seasons. Yeah. And the Jefferson era. Yeah. So Steve's like more realistic. Okay. Jefferson's like a, a caricature of a person. Like this guy's yeah. not. I mean, most of these characters seem like characters. Oh, they are. But I mean, he yeah. is like even above Al okay. or Peggy. Yeah. And um, speak, I could see that show making a return during the Trump years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a show that just never got. But like, Jeff, the Jefferson era, yeah, is real. I mean, it's inappropriate. It's sexist. It's dated. 
But for what it's worth, at the time, it was funny. You know who likes that show? Who? Evan Trulock. And See, he's a big even, fan even, of the Jefferson era. Even I remember if I, I believe I watched episodes when they were new, and even back then I was like, I don't, I just never got it funny. It was, I mean, that's I kinda, was dumb. My parents would watch this show, and that's not a show that a kid should watch. Yeah, but I always called it kind of as background filter. Uh, but you know, I. I don't love, I, I like that show. I don't like love it like I do Home Improvement or something. But yeah. speaking of things I love, we'll end rapid fire with a Transformers tidbit. Akiva Goldsman, who wrote the script of such great films, Batman and Robin, uh, has stepped out of the writer's room at Paramount for the trans. So he was the head writer for the Transformers it was too bad even for franchise, him. but he has stepped away. Robert Kirkman's part of this writer's room, right? Is he? I'm pretty sure. I he was at some point. I don't know if he still is. Because there were some like some name people in this. Like room. Goldsman here, he's a name. Yeah, not a good name, but he's a. I mean, everybody knows him in yeah. Hollywood. Apparently, I've heard he's one of these guys that's really good in the room, but not yeah, good at actually scenes. executing things in scripts. Yeah. All right. Speaking of something that was well executed, let's go ahead and get into our feature review for this episode of the Confirmed Epic Podcast, which is Catherine Bigelow's Detroit. I assume this is about what went on at the motel. What happened at the motel? You don't know, I tell you. I was working security by Wisconsin. And on Tuesday night, we heard gunfire coming from the area near the Algiers. Police was there. There was a lot of shooting. When I went in there, three kids had been killed. No. So they were killed right before you got there. You carry a 38, right? A revolver. You carry a revolver. I do have a 38. You ever shoot anyone? I didn't do it. Please. Oh, here we go. Here in Detroit, a city of war, violence continues. We've made state police and national guardsmen available. I'm declaring a public state of emergency. It's a war zone out there. They're destroying the city. Police! I'm just going to assume you're all criminals. Andrew Stokes, let's go ahead and start out this review as we do all on the Confirmed Epic Podcast with some stats from this film. No! Detroit. This film was directed by Catherine Bigelow, who Academy won Academy Award winning. Academy yeah. Award winning Catherine Bigelow, who won Best Picture and Best Director for Hurt Locker in 2010, and was nominated for these same accolades, but did not win for Zero Dark Thirty in 2012. Hurt Locker is a movie about the Iraq War, and Zero Dark Thirty is famously about the hunt for Osama bin Laden. This film stars John Boyega, Will Poulter, Anthony Mackie, and John Krasinski of The Office, of course, is what we know him for uh, the most. It has music by John Newton Howard. It was released August 4, 2017. Rated R. This is a long film, Andrew Stokes, 143 minutes. Distributed by MGM. This is based on a true story of the 1967 12th Street Riots. Uh... But it mainly focuses on the tra tragedy within the Algiers motel that took place during the riots. This movie critically well received at 85% on RT on Rotten Tomatoes. It's no Wonder Woman. No Wonder Woman, that's true. It's no Spider Man Home. No man. Baby Driver. It's no when War it comes for the Planet of the Apes. RT. <laughs> Still, nothing to you know, snub at with sure. the 85 on RT. $34 million budget. But this mm -hmm. has been a box office bomb. bomb. It's opened with seven point one million this past weekend. That was good enough for an eight place finish at the box office. A box office that let you 
let me remind you, was won by the Dark Tower at nineteen point one million dollars. I believe Emoji Movie did better than this. Yes, correct. And it's his second weekend of Emoji Movie, which is a damn shame. Which when, we can talk. I about. I saw it opening weekend. There was like. Four other people in the theater besides my dad and I. I went yesterday. There were two other people in the theater, and they came in late. And they were making out the whole time. Uh, this you just sat there watching them, Brad. No. I did leave this movie uh, about midway through for like three minutes to go get oh. a snack. No, I came back. What? Yeah, I, I had. To, I wanted to go get some Twizzlers and a Coke. I mean, I haven't. I don't think I ate that big of a lunch yesterday, so I was hungry. Is that bad? Is it bad that I left to get a snack? The point at which you left. There's plenty of places you could have left. No, I picked movie. a good point at this okay. movie to leave. I, I forgot okay. what it was, but I because I kept waiting. Because this okay. isn't. We're gonna talk about a very intense historical drama. There's not too many slow beats, but yeah. this was like a slow one. I, okay. Uh, I, I don't, a, won't say it because I don't want to spoil it. I got it a yet. free drink on the way there, and then a free popcorn once I arrived at the theater. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Because of the, the baby driver when it went out? <laughs> no, I got a free drink because I went to... So I went to McDonald's. I wanted a coffee before this. And we have a McDonald's right by our theater. And I went and, and I got... A, I ordered a latte. Um, and I pull up to the... That's all I got. I pull up to the, the, the drive through window. I pay. Pull up to the next window. They're like, you know, we'll have that for you in a minute. Can you just pull around to the front of the building? I'm like, just order this drink. But okay, Sure. I'm sitting there for a good five or six minutes, just sitting there, waiting on my drink. And then you looted the drink. But right. Finally, somebody comes out and they're like, oh, our uh, coffee machine's broken. And you list the ice cream machine. With yeah, McDonald's. that's coffee machine now. And I was like, okay. So I've been sitting here for like, you know, five or six minutes. And so I went in and the manager was really nice, gave me a refund. And then she's like, here, have a free drink on us. Like she just gave me a large drink. So I'm like, cool. And then I just had a free popcorn at the theater. So. Cool story, Andrew Stux. Thanks. Uh, this nice here about my escapades with Direct TV. I had, I have a, I had uh, no, another one no, this week. No, and I'm not going to get into <laughs> it, but I, I really did. I'll tell you about it off air. Okay. This movie only grows so far to date, nine point three million domestically. Yeah. Uh, let's get into some opening questions here, Andrew Stokes. Yes. Have you seen The Hurt Locker? Have yes. you seen Zero Dark Thirty? Yes. Yes, on both. Yep. Okay. So, Catherine Bigelow, also very well known for directing the original, not the remake, the original Point Break with Keanu Reeves, but she's kind of carved out a, a niche here lately with these historical dramas. Mm -hmm. uh, did you also know she's the ex-wife of James Cameron? Yes. A lot of people don't know that. It though. was a big story when she went Hurt Locker. Yeah. she beat Avatar that year. Oh, he, yes. he was not. I forgot about that narrative. Yeah, and so that's, that's how I know. It was like a big deal that she, you know, beat. Not just her ex-husband, but James Cameron. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, so what are your thoughts on Catherine Bigelow as a director? Because I have a few, but I'm interested in I haven't in seen yours. Point Break. Really? You should uh, go back yeah. and watch that. So I, I'm, I'll, I'll reference more as Zero Dark Thirty and Hurt Locker. Which is better going along with this film than Point Break. Yeah. I like her movies, but I'm not like a huge fan of hers. Like I when I like right now if, if I hear okay Catherine Bigelow has a new film coming out I'm like okay cool I'm I I can go and it'll be you know intense at moments, um, and it's gonna be a good solid film but I know, like n none of those two films I came out of there like thinking like wow what a great film did you see Hurt Locker in the theater no. Okay, I, I did. I saw both Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. I don't think I saw it in the theater. Either. Hurt Locker, I was in college. We went to like the AMC at Concord Mills. But Probably it, why I didn't see it in theater, because you were in college and I was, uh, and and I, was away. I think, she, if I remember, because I thought about going to see Hurt Locker again, Shelby didn't get it right away, but with the Oscar buzz, Shelby did get it in the Hollywood Foothills of North Carolina. That happened with King's Speech as well, yeah. which we did see together. Um, here's what I'll say about Catherine Bigelow as a director, and this rang more true for me coming out of Detroit. She gets the absolute best out of every actor and actress she is working with. And um, whether it's these A-listers or whether it's people you've never heard of, let me prove my point here. And I had this discussion with Will Maney, friend of the show. Jessica Chastain. Jeremy Renner, 
Jeremy Renner and the Hurt Locker had been in other things. Uh, he hadn't. Bro- Twenty eight weeks later, he hadn't broke out yet. Right. I'll argue that he was already ca- he was already cast as Hawkeye. Yeah, though, he was, but, but, but Avengers hadn't come yeah. out yet. And yeah. he debuted in Thor, if you remember, which was twenty eleven. Yeah, so it was a year after, yeah. about a year after Hurt Locker came right, out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she gets the most out of everybody she works with, and. Jeremy Renner never ha- he's not been bad. He's never been as good as he was in the Hurt Locker. Okay. You watch Hurt Locker. I- I'll never forget that scene where there's that bomb in the car, and he's like, "Don't go defuse that." He's like, "You know, screw this. I'm going in." This tense music's playing. One of the most intense film scenes of that year, and him defusing it. But just the small, the small actions on his part, just him moving his eyes, and a lot of this was Renner. I'm not saying it was all Bigelow. But that is Jeremy Renner's best role. He was yeah. nominated for Best Actor for that. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's ever been as good as he was in that film. Now, that could be a one-off. But then I think to Jessica Chastain, I thought that should have won. Argo won Best Picture that year, 2012, which was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. But I remember talking about it on the Confirmed Epic podcast because we did like an hour Oscars thing. Jerry and I did that year. Nerds. Yeah. And... uh. She should have won Best Actress that year. Who uh, won Best Actress? I can't remember. Might have been Jennifer Lawrence for something. Was that year that a Silver Linings Playbook came out, uh, okay. I think. So I think Jennifer Lawrence won. I could be mistaken on the years there. She did not win. Zero Dark Thirty didn't win Best Picture. But So I'll never forget that final shot of Zero Dark Thirty when they've got Bin Laden. Spoilers. And she has been working on this, like most of her whole, she was recruited out of high school, which was crazy to me, but she'd been working on this her whole adult life. And it's like, she got him. Now what? And that tear just rolls down her eye. And she looks at the TV and Trump's on the news. <laughs> no, no, it just fades to black. And even somebody like Jason Clark, remember when he was going to be a rising star, he was in uh, Dawn for the Planet of the Apes, he was in Term- the T- Terminator Genesis, oh, yeah. and he was a uh, probably second billing to Chastain in Zero Dark Thirty. He's never been as good as he was in that movie. So Clark, Chastain, and Renner. What about uh, Chris Pratt? He was, I mean, he's been better at points, I'd say. He wasn't a big part of that movie. Either. No, no, he wasn't, but... I would argue that she got the most out of those three actors than any other director ever has. I mean, what is um, what is Renner really? I mean, he 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 did the he was, one Jason Bourne, but otherwise she's just, he's been doing Marvel movies since then, right? Yeah, there was one other movie he was in that was pretty big. I can't remember off the top okay. of my head. Um, but so I'm think there's a hallway scene that I really want to talk about in this movie. We'll get into, but. Anthony you Mac- love hallway scenes, yeah. but you don't like the Marvel Netflix shows. Anthony Mackie. Never heard of him. Is uh, in this film. As I, didn't, I didn't know that going in. In the stats. Uh, and it, I'm not going to talk about the hallway scene yet, but of everybody in this row in the hallway, he's the only known actor. But everybody oh, okay. in, in, in that scene who's a victim, and even the police there, mm-hmm. I mean, they have put everything into that role into the roles they're in and you really capture that fear and that horror of those people lined up against that hallway yeah in this film so i think she gets the most out of everybody she's working with um which so which you prefer out of zero dark 30 and hurt locker if you had to pick one like you wanted to rewatch one tonight which would you pick probably hurt locker I would too because it kind of—I know it's a true story and whatnot, but it kind of stands alone as an entertaining action film in some weird way. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you on that. Did you have any knowledge of these Twelfth uh, Street riots going into this film? Because I—I'm a history teacher and I did not. No, no. And it's not, not like the L.A. Similar. riots right. and Rodney King were like, okay, everybody knows this, right? Right. Yeah, I knew like you know, there's. Gen- in general, riots going on and off during this time, but not this one specifically. No. And, and oddly enough, George Romney is the governor of Michigan at this yeah. point, and they use actual clips of Mitt Romney's father, George Romney. Yeah. Uh, I think that's one thing this film does really well. Is, Liberal Hollywood. Well, it incorporates real 
at times real footage from the actual riots yeah. and real news reels. Yeah. And that's done a lot in Hollywood. I mean, this is nothing groundbreaking, but sometimes it takes you out of the film. You know what it reminded me of? What? Uh, the remake of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. With a, uh, like, there's the a one few with clip- Jessica Bill. Yeah. There's like a few like cl- like clips of like there's a, it's supposed to be like the aftermath as seen from like a newspaper photographer or something. Yeah. I don't know why, just the way it was done reminded me of that. I want before we get into our review, um in your opinion, the state of race relations in America and, and th- let's just go ahead and preface this. This isn't going to be our typical type of review. I mean, uh, not that we want to insert our personalities here, but th- this is serious subject matter. Mm-hmm. This is a weighty, this is a heavy film about racism, police brutality, and race relations in America. Albeit this took place in 1967, you can't help but relate it to events of the past three or four years or so, yeah. where this has been in the news, whether it was at Fruitvale Station in Oakland, whether it was Ferguson, Missouri, whether it was Trayvon Martin, whether it was right here near us, the Charlotte riots. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, this is stuff that's been in the news recently. Uh, so this will be a more maybe serious conversation than sure. what you're accustomed to on this podcast. Are you sure about that? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So if this movie comes out a year ago, mm-hmm. when we're more in the... Uh, post-Charlotte riots, near the Charlotte riots, and just kind of, because thank God, I mean, we haven't had in 2017, like, any major race riots. A lot of that may have to do with Donald Trump being president. Probably not, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, He's healing America, Brad. He's bringing us all together. Yeah, people are scared to death. Uh, (laughs) So, in your opinion, the, the recent historical events regarding race and American police brutality make this a good time for this film to come out? Or, and I asked Will Maney this same question. We're both history teachers, and I, I thought hard about this. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder, would this, if this came out a year ago this time, would it, or maybe it came out six months after Ferguson? Yeah. Would this have had a bigger impact culturally, or would it have been fuel in the fire and maybe have made things worse? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like even though there hasn't been any huge, um, I mean, there's still been some stuff this year. There's been some uh, more, uh, more so acquittals and stuff going on this year, yeah. more so than any big specific incidents. Uh, so there's still been some some rioting and civil uprest to this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a good time to come out. I don't think it's like it's too late. If that's what, you, if maybe you're meaning. Yeah, now let's phrase this now. That that was kind of politically. Let's talk about this as far as from a, a movie standpoint. Yeah. Do you think this movie would have done better or been better? It was well received critically. If it would have came out, let's say in November, and this was one of those awards types films. Because I feel like maybe August was an odd spot on the release calendar for it. Maybe. That's not a big summer blockbuster type deal. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Which, it came out the same weekend as Dark Tower, which, not great, obviously, from what we've heard. We hadn't seen that film. Yeah, but... But that was a blockbuster type film. Yeah. And Detroit is... I mean, it's not cheap. It looks incredible. But, I mean, it's not yeah. what you'd classify as a blockbuster. It's more of right. an artsy reward, awards season yeah. type uh, movie. Yeah. So, all right, Andrew Stokes. Um, I'm going to just say from the get-go here... Okay. Since this is a historical event, okay. we're going to say spoilers for Detroit from okay. the, moving forward. Okay, A.K. Andrew Stokes, what are your initial impressions of Detroit? Horror. Horror? Your horror. Uh, my initial impression... It was a horror movie in a way. Is that um, this, this does not continue that trend of overrated things in 2017. Um, but I also don't think that this was necessarily, there, there wasn't like a lot of hype for yeah. Detroit. You know what I mean? Critically, there was hype. Definitely. There was some. Yeah. They, and they made a push here at the end. 
when the first reviews start coming out, they started making this kind of campaign. I saw a lot of com- more commercials and stuff for Detroit. I think they realized they may have something on their hands there. Yeah. Or like, they realized maybe their uh, numbers weren't looking good or something. They're trying to <laughs> get more people out to see it. I don't know. Um, so did you, I mean, and but, but, uh, yeah. did you like this movie? I did like this movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I liked it a lot as well. I will, of course, give our final ratings at the end of our review, as mm-hmm. as we usually do. Uh, there was a lot to like here. I mean, it was intense. It made you feel uncomfortable, but I think that was the point of the movie. Yeah. Uh, there are certain movies you watch in life, and we mentioned this earlier in the podcast, like uh, Schindler's List is always my go-to example. Yeah. Schindler's List won Best Picture. Spielberg got a Best Directing Oscar for it. Arguably, probably his best movie. Uh but it's a movie you only want to see once, but you're glad that you saw it. Detroit's not quite up there with that intensity level of the Schindler's List, yeah. but it is that type of movie that I'm glad that I saw it this summer. I'm glad we're talking about it on this podcast, but in particular, going back to that hallway scene at the motel, I don't want to see this movie again, I don't yeah. think. Um, now, did you kind of have that same feeling walking away from this movie? Yeah, yeah, it's one of those, like, you know, what I just watch, but in a good way, quote-unquote yeah. good way, you know what I mean? Of, yeah. You know, not, this is a bad In a movie, critically but, good way. Right, yeah. yeah. Um. So, what did you think of the film's kind of opening animation? I, I, As a history teacher, I really enjoyed it. Basically took us from post-Civil War in America yeah. to the Great Migration and all that, and... Uh, something that a history nerd would obviously be drawn to, but did you, I know you're a fan of history as well, but what'd you think about that opening yeah, animation? I, I, I like it. Yeah. I thought it was well done. It was, it didn't take me out of anything. I was like, I didn't look back and be like, that didn't fit this movie at all. That was really quirky. No, I, I thought it worked well within the, the context of the film itself. If they, if they kept doing little, <laughs> animations like that yeah. throughout the film yeah that would have been weird but as a as a setup it's like okay cool yeah this works so we mentioned earlier um that Catherine bigelow has a knack of getting a lot out of her uh actors mm-hmm. and this movie's no different uh so let's talk about these actors and these performances because i do think this is a very performance driven film as a lot of yeah. these Oscar type, not that this will be nominated, but a lot of these artsy Oscar type films are. Uh, I'm going to start with John Boyega because he is probably the most recognizable person. I think he was kind of at the front and center of the marketing. Not yeah, they, that there was a big push. They def- yeah, but they, they definitely he's the poster child of this. Yeah. Movie. And to me, John Boyega was really good in this movie. Yeah. <sighs> He's not who I'm going to remember for this movie. He was really solid. He was subtly good. A lot of that his had character's to do- not as important as you, you would, would think. Yes. Yeah. And his character that he's playing is very um, uh, under the radar anyway. He's not directly involved with what's going on. He's kind of pulled in. Yeah. And um, uh, he was good. Yeah. I mean, not nothing that I'm going to be like, oh, this is going to be a career-defining role for John Boyega. Right. You know, I guess that's more going to be Finn. Uh, yeah. But I, our, he was, I remember seeing him in Attack of the Block, the first thing. I, have you ever seen oh, that movie? No, I haven't. Uh, he, you need to watch that movie. Okay, He's yeah. great in it, and it's a great movie. Uh, it's a British film, so right, he yeah. uses his it's actual... all the aliens attack. Yeah. 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 So uh, he played Melvin Dismukes which is a, a, a very involved last name. But, of course, all these are real people that they're playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of this film, you see the whole parts of this event have not been historically uh, recorded. So they took some liberties and they, they filled in some gaps based they, on personal testimonies. Yeah, they took some liberties. And obviously, we're, we're in spoilers now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way that the, you know legally what happened versus what people claim happened. You know what I mean? Um, it, you know, they're, they're telling one side of the story basically. Yeah. There's some of this is disputed though. Some of the facts seem to favor one side over the other from what I understand. 
And I think that's a fair assessment of that based on the information you get at the end of this film. Yeah. Uh, so to me, the star of this movie, the thing I remember about this movie the most in, in a negative way within the film's narrative, Yeah. but in a positive way from a performance perspective is this Will Poulter guy. Yeah. Uh, actor who plays officer Philip Crass, who is the main officer who uh, is killing African Americans, who is the poster child for police brutality yeah. in this movie. And uh, I will say that I had no idea this guy could act this well. I mean, all I've seen, I, I think he was in Divergent. I didn't see that. He's, He's in, in We're the Millers. We're the Millers. I think, I think it was Maze Runner he was in. Maze Runner. Okay, sorry. I knew it was one of those YA adaptations. I, I, I haven't get, seen They kind of run together. I saw, I saw the word the Millers, though. Oh, yeah. He's very funny. In that. He's funny. He play, He sings the TLC song. That, that part was in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, but in this, this kid, like, I, I'm, I'm wondering here, is this an instance of Kath, Catherine Bigelow just getting the most out of this actor, or is this a breakout role for this guy. Yeah. As far as, are we going to maybe look back 20 years from now and he's going to have become an A-list actor with a series of hits and you're going to look back, oh, remember he was in Detroit and nobody saw Detroit maybe in the theater, but maybe they go back and watch it. Yeah. Based on either the awards buzz this movie gets or this being his first big performance. I know War of the Millers was big, but this is a, a drama movie. Yeah, War of the Millers was big, but it was it was a comedy, you know what I mean? It yeah. Was a, he know. was asked to do a lot here. Yeah. And I'm going to say something I can't believe. I'm going to say last week on our Baby Driver review, we talked about chewing scenery and how Kevin Spacey has this knack to subtly chew scenery. He just pulls you in so much, you never feel like he's overacting. Yeah. That's the way I felt this yeah. performance was That's from this kid sure. here. Yeah. When he's on, yeah, when he's on screen, you're paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's not just his the way he's delivering the lines. I mean, he's very good physically acting in yeah. this role. The way in this, maybe this is in the trailer. The way he gives that shit eating grin to one, I think one of the girls, maybe. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my God, this guy is pure freaking evil. Yeah. What do you think about his performance here? Because yeah, I, I was with, blown away. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It, if they were to, I'd be, sometimes this is iffy on how they do this stuff. If the Academy were to nominate him, would it be Best Supporting Actor? Because, I mean, he's not the main character here, is he? No, I don't think so. He's I think Boyega is the main character. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be. Um, I mean, I re no, I really feel like um, that the one singer is really the main character. That, of course, uh, this takes place in Motown yeah. in Detroit. So we kind of follow this up-and-coming Motown group, the Dramatics, yeah. uh, kind of like the Temptations or something like that. In mm -hmm. fact, they're even compared to the Temptations within the film. And they're trying to break out while all the proverbial crap, well, not proverbial, I guess the shit is hitting the fan mm -hmm. in the middle of these race riots. And as they're about to get their breakout, what seems like will be their breakout performance, they have to leave, uh, to evacuate the, the place. The club they're the at. The club yeah. that they're at, yeah. And they go to the motel, the Algiers, where all this tragedy will, of course, unfold. So, yeah. But you know the character who we see at the end and he never really gets closure, it feels like you said was the main character. I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. Seems like it was Lewis, but I may be wrong. But the character that I took away that resonated with me from the dramatics group was kind of their manager or their friend, uh, the yeah. younger kid. I, I just, for whatever reason... I, I just felt for, I mean, I felt for all the people involved, but I felt for him in particular, his, his, maybe his performance, what, whatever yeah. it may be. But, um, I took note, his name is Jacob Lattimore. Uh, that's the uh, actor's name. And he played Fred Temple. This is the, re the real life singer apparently did like a song for this movie. Really? He, he did it. And, um, one of the women, the, the uh, dark haired woman, like she, the, the real life, her, yeah. she was on set uh, consulting a lot. That's um, crazy. Supposedly, the other woman, um, she's like completely disappeared. 
Like, like not, not, not in like a, a shady way. Like when, like when all this was over, they went back home, and I don't know if she changed her name or what, but like she like broke off contact with her friend. Her friend saw her like one time at a mall, and she like avoided her, and apparently like she never saw her again. And That's like, eerie. and like the journalists were never able to track her down. Like she completely disappeared from like public life and stuff. Like she just. Why nothing to do with you know Speaking putting it all behind her, which is understandable. Apparently, uh, the women um, they had it worse than this movie depicts. Like they were actually treated even worse than they were in this movie. I can, I, I really thought there was going to be a rape, just where this movie was heading. At least it felt. I'm I'm so glad it. Didn't. There's a movie where yeah, well, there's a part where like one of their dresses is kind of like ripped off or whatever. Yeah. One of them has. But, like, supposedly they were completely, like, stripped or whatever, like, in, in the real thing. Completely stripped and, like, berated for hanging out with these uh, black guys. How many hours did this take place over in real life, I wonder? I mean, just a sure. whole night. I'm thinking, like, this was a whole night. Yeah. Uh, so, there's some... Uh, what happens is there's some guys playing with a toy gun at the uh, Algiers. Yeah. Uh, the national the starter pistol. Yeah. yeah. The na- National Guard has been brought in. And that John Boyega, who's a security guard for a store, kind of meets up with them, yeah. and they respond to this problem. Yeah. And uh, which it really wasn't that big of a problem. It was a guy with a toy gun. That's one thing. But then they call in the Detroit PD, and where you get to Will Poulter's group of two really racist cops and one guy who's just a dumbass. Yeah. Uh, I think would be the best way to put it. Yeah. But you really did feel within this film, the conflict between the Detroit PD, the National Guard, Mm -hmm. and, like, the state police, the state troopers. Yeah. Because at one point, the state troopers show up. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, something's not right in there. Civil rights are being violated. Mm -hmm. And they turn the other way. Yeah. And they leave because they don't want to be caught up in some type of civil rights litigation or something down the road, which is just, it was just sad to see them leave. And then, the National Guard are there, but really only that one guy is in there. And yeah. you can tell he, while he's participating somewhat, he doesn't think what's going on is right. Right. He he almost participates. It feels like he participates because he's like, okay, let's finish. Let's let's wrap this up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to help the cops out here, even though they're kind of crazy. I'm going to help them out real quick just so we can finish this and get them out of here. It kind of felt like. And then John Boyega is there and he's in a really odd spot because he's a security guard. Right. So he's on the law enforcement side, but yeah. he's black as yeah. well. And of course he gets called a lot of racial names for yeah, and he's, being he's, on that side. And whatnot. Right. He, he's, um, he's uh, apologetic almost for what the white, you know, the cops and stuff are doing. Like he he um wants to appease them almost. He feels like you know let's just you know be extra nice to them and to get them. Like out he of here, br- you know I know I mean? this is the National Guardsman, but he brings them coffee and stuff and yeah. Uh, but the the scene that dominates this movie is that hallway scene. They got yeah. them up against that hallway. They're taking them out one at a time, and they're acting like they're killing them, but they're really not. Now, they did yeah. kill one guy, the cook, the guy yeah. who shot the starter pistol. Yeah. And they later on, uh, I guess you could say accidentally, the cop kills one of the African-American kids yeah. when he was just supposed to pretend to kill them, as the other cops have been doing. Right. He but, didn't accidentally do it. The other ones didn't, Yeah. you know... Did, did, yeah, weren't expecting him to actually do it. He clearly didn't know what was going on. Yeah, he thought they were really killing people. But the dread, the fear, their hands shaking, them crying. That the, they start to break out in song. They break out in prayer. I mean, it felt so just. It was it was intense. Freaking intense, man. Yeah. I mean, it was like there was a, a school shooter or something like it. That type of feeling that I got from American Horror Story season one when that whole thing took place. Did you ever get to that part? There was a school shooting. Yeah. In that? No. No. Okay. All right. That was one or of the. Did mo- I? That was one of the most afraid I've ever been watching TV or movie was the school shooting. It was episode. the blonde kid did it, right? Yeah, it was Tate. It was Evan. Maybe Peters. I did get to it. Evan Peters was a school shooter. And uh, okay. spoilers for American Horror Story Season 1. But yeah, a lot of it has to do with me being a teacher. You know, that's obviously a rational fear. A fear. Uh, but 
that same type of fear and dread, these actors captured that. Yeah. And it they did show you multiple sides to the police as well because one of the African American kids escapes. He immediately is confronted by a cop and he's like, Oh shit. Remember? And uh, the cop helps out. And you're yeah. kind of, a, as an audience member, you're like, oh, no, the police. Yeah. Because what's going to happen here? And he actually ends up being a good cop. Yeah. And uh, Will Poulter's character has killed two men within the course of this day, mm-hmm. wrongfully so, because he does one in the film's uh, opening act a- as well. Um I, I will say that one of the big accomplishments of this film also is... It's called Detroit, and I feel that they captured Detroit well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Motown's involved. The auto industry is very involved. George Romney's shown. I mean, it's. I know that's Michigan as a whole, but still. Uh, did you feel they did a good job of capturing this? It was very grim, but Motown was glamorous, so it was kind of a weird dichotomy. Yeah, it definitely captured it kind of gave you a nice snapshot of what was going on and what it felt like, especially in some of the areas that this took place in. Yeah, I, I agree. I, when I walked out of this movie and I wrote this in my review that you can find at Ep- the Epic Review, thepicreview.com, mm-hmm. I started thinking, will this movie have as big of a, a social impact, cultural impact that other historical dramas dealing with race that they had recently, like Selma, Mm-hmm. And Lee Daniels, the butler. Which are, did you ever see the butler? No. Oh my God, dude. So I showed so the butler. Big, big cultural impact there then. No, uh, I saw. Watch it and see the final scene and tell me if it doesn't. Sure. But, All uh, right. And it was a big, the butler was a big deal. It was nominated for Best Picture. I guess Avatar was too. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the butler, I showed this. So I'd heard it was great and I just never sat down and watched it. And, mm-hmm. um, I showed it to my kids for the first time last year when we were talking about civil rights. And I, dude, I had, there were, I, I don't think any of my kids saw me, mm-hmm. uh, but there were tears running down my eye mm-hmm. after the butler. This is the first time you had seen it? The first time I had ever seen it. So back, I'd heard. Back off, back off. Another teacher had told me how great it is. They showed it in their class ever since it had been okay. released. And, and this and that. So, I mean, it was a good endorsement. It's not like I showed something that I had no idea. Well, no, yeah, but, I, don't, uh, I don't mean that. But, but yeah. I mean, just how it ends. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my, dude. I, I've, I've been trying. I've asked Abby multiple times to watch. Because, again, it's one of those type of movies you only want to see once. Yeah. But you're so glad you've seen it. Yeah. I mean, one of those perfect movies to show in school. Because mm-hmm. you, uh, as a student, you probably otherwise wouldn't have sought it out. Yeah, Uh, but as far as race, I don't know if the and uh, when I say race, the battle for civil rights and whatnot, I don't know if Detroit's gonna have the type of impact that Selma or uh, the Butler did. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to a specific area of civil rights, like police brutality, yeah, that it could have that type of impact. Mm And I know this, I don't think this film, despite not doing well at the box office, I just have this gut feeling, could be completely off base. Could be too much coffee. I uh, could be, and a Coke Zero. But I have this gut feeling that this film is not going to go away. Mm-hmm. Either it's going to get some award buzz. Yeah. Uh, maybe Will Poulter becomes the next, who knows, you know, Kevin Spacey. Tom or Hanks. Tom Hanks. Who, who knows? I mean, yeah. Uh, Tom God. Hanks, before he did Philadelphia with uh, Will Smith, nobody knew that either one of those two would ever be as big as they were going to be. I mean, I think if you ask people who who would have a better chance of breaking out, Boyega or Poulter, from namesake and what he's in, it would be Boyega. Yeah. But if you're watching the two performances, I mean, Poulter's in like a... Not that Boyega is... He's not bad. Yeah, but Poulter's like in a league of his own. Well, somebody I think might uh, that I think benefits from this, and it's a great performance is Anthony Mackie. And oh, I would like yes. to see if he can if he can reach this level of performance in other films. I think he could be a big star. He was so good, and he wasn't in the film much. No, like, like I said, I no going into this, I didn't know he was in the film. Him or uh, John uh, Krasinski. Yeah, John Krasinski. 
who plays like a, a lawyer, a union yeah. lawyer for the police. Yeah, a lot of people are like, you know, this film starring John Krasinski, and I'm like, he's not really in the film that much. But the, in these artsy movies, this happens. You get these yeah. big actors who come in for almost a glorified cameo. Yeah. And they I, get nominated for like best supporting actor. I thought he was, I thought his only scene was going to, he, there's his, the first time we see him, he comes into the, uh, the interrogation, interrogation room. He's like, Get out of here. What are you guys doing? And leaves. And I was like, is that the only time we're going to see him? Because that was a really random, you know. And it's hard. He's one of those guys, too, where it's like every time he pops up, I'm like, oh, there's Jim. Yeah. What's Jim doing here? You know what I mean? But he like, has been in a lot of other stuff yeah, not, since. not that he acts like Jim. Not that the way he's acting is like, oh, that's he's just acting just like he acted in The Office. But it's like he's just so tied to that character that I can't help you. Like, that's that's an iconic TV character. Yeah. Uh, but... I don't think his his performance is great here. Yeah. I don't think he's getting any type of best supporting actor. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah. Anthony Mackie was great. I, I could see Anthony Mackie being talked about for some type of nomination here. Yeah. I see Will Poulter getting nominated. He probably won't. I'm, this is probably the last good movie that Will Poulter will ever be in <laughs> now that I'm hyping this guy up. But, I mean... Uh, he's that, gonna come out and be some be in some Star Wars spinoff film, and it's gonna be awful. It's gonna be like the downfall of the new Star Wars universe. And yeah, he'll Brad be in the, thought this the, guy was gonna be great. He'll be the main character of the Disney streaming Star Wars TV show. <laughs> uh, the, the girl, the black headed girl, uh, Hannah Marie, uh, ju- played by uh, excuse me, the character's name was Julianne, played by Hannah Murray Gilly. Mm. on Game of Thrones is who this uh, la- this young lady plays in Game okay. of Thrones. So I kept trying to put a face with a name, and then I had to finally just look it up after the movie, and it was. And, and, and her, her terror, as we mentioned earlier, it, it was captured uh, very well. I It would be interesting to see. I feel like this film's just going to be here and gone. I hope not. Uh, but... That's on a surface level. I do think we're going to be talking about this film from a social context and a performance context uh, down the road. So I feel like you will be. I will be. I <laughs> now you know we want to do our top ten most anticipated films of fall and winter. But at the end of the year, something we've never done is a top ten movies of the year list. And yeah. that, that is my goal, to do that show and either okay. have it recorded by January 1 and release it on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this will be one that I'm going to consider for one of the best movies that I saw this year. With that being said, before we get into ratings, is there anything else you want to say about this one? Well, yeah. Well, Stokes? well I, I think there's plenty of the film we haven't talked about yet, which is also leads into one of my biggest criticisms of the film, in what? that everything before and after the hallway scene almost seems like too much. It almost feels like this movie should have just been the hallway hallway scene for the most part. Like leading up to the hallway scene and after the hallway scene, everything is. I felt like it was like a little long. I definitely felt the length of this movie by the end of it. I did feel the length of it too, but I didn't feel it in like, oh my god, I want to get out of here. No, but especially by the end, like I actually had a person. Um, like when things were wrapping up at the hotel and and, and everything, and somebody like left. They thought it was over. I assume so because I thought so too. I'm like, oh, he doesn't want. I knew see we it. hadn't seen John Krasinski yet. Okay, I didn't know he was in this film. Well, so, I did only because I made the show notes. Oh, okay. Of before. who's starring before I went and saw gotcha. the movie. So like, yeah, he he left and like this guy's leaving. I'm like, oh, I guess he. I guess he doesn't want to see the last five minutes of this movie or something. And then it keeps going. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's a lot more of this movie left. So, uh... I, I think this movie needed to be a lot. I, I, I get so. I get what you're saying. I, but I'm just, from my point of view... Yeah. Do you think that maybe there was... Do you, I think did you not feel closure for the characters? Sure, but I think we could have felt closure and it had been shorter. There was a lot of stuff that was going on with the police officers, a lot of scenes with them that I guess was to maybe try to give a little bit of their perspective or to humanize them a little bit. But really, it was like, you just really going to cut most of this out. You just want them to go straight to the uh, gas chamber or the electric chair? Well, just like, no, I'm just you, know, like well, you know, we're just watching these guys. Oh, now they're being interviewed. Now this is happening. And it's like, but we're not, I didn't feel like we got much from that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I thought it was character development, but. 
to an yeah. end. The guy's a racist piece of crap, and that's who that's who he was at the Just beginning. Sh- that's who he was at the end. What like, I mean by that is, it really showed that not every cop at the Detroit PD was a racist son of a bitch. Like, sure. In fact, the chief or whoever, maybe it's a yeah, high a homicide guy detective or whatever, yeah. calls him a racist sob. Yeah, I think it was a homicide. Detective. And, and like, I think that that there's there was power in that. And I think there was purpose in that. That's not character building for you know the the that cop though. It but just... it, but it's I know this is set in the real world, is set in Detroit and whatnot. But it's almost like world building within the context of the film. No, no, that I they're just... making the PD out to be more than just one dimensional. Sure. But what what else would do you want to say about? That's it? my that's my main thing. It's just everything kind of everything just felt like it took a little bit. Felt bloated. Yeah, it did feel bloated. It definitely felt like there was stuff to trim out. I think you could have tr- maybe trimmed a little bit here. I, I will a, say a little bit from the stuff. Le- I'm not sure what from the the leading up to that, but it, that, all of that felt a little long. To the me. trial stuff almost felt like a, a different movie. Yeah, uh, almost like a sequel or something. Like yeah. it was. I mean, it made sense within the the framework of the film. Sure, but it was a completely different perspective of everything else we had seen up into that point yeah it was the legal perspective yeah which it, i don't know I, if we necessarily needed yeah and i think it's because of the the hallway scene is so intense it's almost like baby driver in a weird way that baby driver has that incredible opening scene yeah and never matches that this hallway scene's in the middle of the movie yeah but nothing in this film comes close to yeah it. i mentioned like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. just kind of almost randomly. It, it would be almost like that movie, but there's an extra like 20 minutes where the police hunt down and find Leatherface and like kill him in the woods. Or need, you know what I mean? It's I like, wish we could have saw that, especially yeah. with the guy that plays the sheriff from Full Metal Jacket. What's that guy's name? I forget. I can't yeah. remember that. He actor. was a bad guy. Yeah, he's a, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been a while. I think the last time I watched that was like Halloween 2000. Seven. Yeah, he was like the related remake. to Leatherface. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah that, that's one that I, I, I liked, liked that one. I watched the original like mm-hmm. two Halloweens ago because yeah. they re-released it on Blu-ray. Yeah, it looked great, but I yeah. prefer I prefer the remake over the original. Jessica Biel helps a lot with that one. Yeah, she does. Uh, so before we rate this film, Andrew Stokes, is there anything else you want to say about Detroit? I felt like there was something else. Um, well, let me ask you this. Would you recommend this film? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Despite um, just know you what this film? I, I would, but know what you're in for. <laughs> this is going to yeah. be an intense yeah. race, social race commentary, police brutality commentary through a historical lens. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is, so be prepared for that. Would you recommend this film? This is getting into just a little nitty-gritty or whatever. Would you recommend this film, uh, like, right now? If somebody hadn't watched, out of all the movies in the theater right now, like Dunkirk and maybe Baby Driver still hanging on and stuff, would you recommend this over those? Or would you say, eh? It depends on the person. Sure, that's fair. But it, it doesn't fit its release window. Yeah. This would fit... Even end of October, yeah, first week of November, yeah. You know, I mean, it's definitely not something you'd put out in January like a throwaway movie. Yeah, August isn't the worst. I mean, what do we got? We got Dark Tower. We got Annabelle Creation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's not which, I, which I'm gonna but, see. We're not gonna review, but yeah, I'm gonna see. But there's still big movies in the theater that are left over. Well, this you know? year is just crazy. I like it has been. the trend for me this way. year is it's been a while since I've seen a bad movie. In the theater. Um, I'm trying to think of the last, like... Yeah, uh, last night. And yeah. And before that, Baywatch. See, I didn't see Baywatch. And but, I, think, I mean, I, I think knew... they, Those may be the only two... I've seen a lot of movies this year in theaters. Those may be the only two movies that I would categorize as bad that I've seen. And last night, you knew that was going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean... I had a, a, a suspicion... That I may have been in for a bad film. <laughs> yeah, considering it took a donation to get your butt in the seat. Thanks, Timothy Belmont. Uh, let's go ahead and rate this film. I'll go yep. first because I, I don't know your opinion. I, I want to wait on here. Don't know my opinion. We just reviewed the film. I mean, your rating. Excuse me. Yeah. Poor choice of words. I will go great and a half here. I don't think it's as good as the Butler. 
I don't think it's as good as Selma. Those recent societal race commentaries using history, but I really like this movie. Will Poulter is a breakout star. Catherine Bigelow continues to get the most out of the crew she's working with. I yeah. go great and a half, Andrew Stokes, for Detroit. What would you give it? This looks think, tough for you. Yeah, I'm because I'm between two. Like the hallway scene's so good, but I really like Like it's epic. Yeah. It is. But, but then like the stuff surrounding again, like it just some parts are really dragged. Like uh a, a slightly before and then definitely after. Um I think I'm gonna say good and a half. Really? Yeah. And what were but, you torn between? Or, or between that and great. Yeah. Like you know. when I walked out, I was like, rarely do I know what I'm gonna give a movie right when I walk out. I thought, oh great. Then I wrote my review as I was writing my review and I was reflecting and thinking about the performances and whatnot. I, I just had to give it an um, extra notch up. So I, I'll go great and a half. Andrew Stokes goes good and a half for Detroit. Yeah, I felt the same way. I really wasn't like, I don't know. It was, it's hard to read sometimes, you know? Yeah. All right, Andrew Stokes, do you want to tell our listeners what we will be reviewing next week for episode 73 of the podcast? No, because I already forgot. Do we, we sell Yeah, we it? agreed. It and it's already been ordered on Amazon, so we're Uh-oh. reviewing it. We're uh, reviewing Shin Shinsuke Nakamura's Godzilla. That's a wrestler. All right, Shin Godzilla, which Shin was Godzilla. the last Japanese Godzilla film. We're going to be reviewing that next week. It was a film released last year. Yeah. But it's, it was just released. It made on, your top ten of the summer. Yeah. Anticipated for the summer. Yeah, it, it was just released on home video in the states um, on VHS like a month ago yeah yeah. I think it was less than I think two weeks is ago is this subtitled or dubbed I don't know probably, it'll probably have the option it's Godzilla man who cares it's gonna be well if the dub I've, I've heard it's a very different Godzilla film though, I heard he from, dances from other people I heard he dances so. with Mothra see I'm really excited to review this because you're a big Godzilla fan it's also Why hopefully you saying that if I find time, I'm going to give me an excuse to release the retro rewind edition of our Godzilla. 1997. No, not that one. Or the one starring Brian Cranston. Yeah. Brian uh, Cranston that review. And Scarlet Witch. And All right, Quicksilver. Andrew Stokes. Where can people find more of you? You can follow me on Twitter at AKA Andrew Stokes, um, where I just retweet things that Brad says. Uh, and then you could read my few articles on the Epic Review. That's T H Epic Review. Com. All right. I also want to tease before I give my Ooh, plugs here. You tease you. That uh, it's not a tease. It's more of a reveal that the plan okay. is uh, Barbecue 17 is going out of town. But supposedly, this is rumored, allegedly. So we have a plan? Are you sure? Are you yeah. Sure you the Tuesday that Jerry Barbecue 17 Reed, along with his father, Bob Reed, will be reviewing Tales of Halloween with me. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thank you, Bob Reed. So stay tuned for. I don't know if it if it'll release Tuesday night. It probably won't be out till next was, Wednesday. What, what'd you say you were reviewing? Sorry. Uh, Tales of Halloween, if you, which you've seen. Have I? Jerry said you liked it. So <sighs> he's a liar. Have you not seen it? Uh, apparently not. I, I it's really an anthology remember. series. If it's the one I'm thinking of, yeah, I don't. I, I remember watching anthology, one anthology with him last year or the year before, but I don't recall the title. But that was it. Tells of how apparently. All right, as for me, find me on Twitter at the real Brad Bell, D R E E L Brad Bell, R E E L Brad. Bell. You can add me on Facebook at Real Brad. You can like our Facebook page that Andrew Stokes runs. You can follow us on Instagram at Confirmed Epic Podcast. A lot of new followers on there. Thank you, guys. You can also follow us on Stardust. Just look for Confirmed Epic. So make sure you uh, check out Stardust. Anytime, guys, sometimes I don't remind our listeners, you can email us at thepicreview, theepicreview at gmail.com. From the Hollywood foothills of North Carolina, we are out. That's all I have to say about that. This is
This has been a production of the GWW Radio Network. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Also, check out Geeks Worldwide at the GWW.com for all the latest news, reviews, and opinions on video games, comics, movies, TV, cosplay, and more. Geeks Assemble! Uh, Andrew Stokes is adjusting his microphone. It's, a lot's happened since the last time that we all got together. When I say we all, me and Andrew. Test. Can you hear that fine? Yeah, I can hear you good. So, um, hear me well. Hear you well, yeah. <laughs> Have you uh, started building your nuclear fallout shelter yet? Uh, no, my nuclear fallout shelter is still in boxes back there. If you see it, I got it from Ikea. Yeah, you and... should uh, have unloaded it. I can see them selling it now. Well, I don't know. They're a Swedish company, so yeah, who knows if they would be selling it or not. But but what have you been up to, like, non-movie and TV related? Uh, I've been learning Chinese. Uh, Maybe you should learn Korean. That may be no, more effective. No, I think what would happen is uh, all, of, all Koreans will be wiped off the map in the ensuing war. Uh, but China will move into the vacuum left by our nuclear China. South Pacific yeah. Holocaust, and uh, yeah, with the the fire and fury. So it's it's actually kind of scary what's going on. It's a good thing we have humor like, helps me cope. Yeah, and podcasts and stuff. Podcast, podcast helps me cope too. Yeah, but uh, enough about Donald Trump. Hopefully, there'll be a podcast next. Wait, week. Well, we we're talking about Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. I fire you're talking and about fury that new TV show. Ah, uh, so <laughs> yeah. So, did you watch any of the Panthers preseason game? I haven't. No, but yeah, it was last night. And uh, but you went to Fan Fest. I did. Yeah, I was just working last night. How was um, Fan Fest? It was a lot of fun. Um, Cam didn't throw, did he? He did. He did. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to. He was suited up. I mean, he didn't do much, but he definitely he did throw a little bit. Did some of the drills. Um, I think he did one of the two minute drills, if I remember correctly. Did any of them uh, sign any autographs? There was autograph signing, but it was kind of like um, cordoned off to one end of the field that was nowhere near us, and so we just didn't bother going down there. Um, not that like none of, none of us really brought anything to sign anyway, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. Let me tell you my best Panthers autograph story. I'm pretty sure you heard this before, but it's been a while, and it's one reason I actually thought about going to Carolina Panthers training camp this year because I hadn't been in like three or four years. But I had an authentic Peppers jersey back when he was in the prime of his Panthers career. And I got it for Christmas from my grandmother. Thank you, Betty Alexander. And um, I'm, I get up front. I get there early at like two hours before practice starts. I'm probably like 20 or so when this happens. And Peppers rarely signs. So I have my jersey kind of hanging over the barricade there. Yeah. And... There's this lady beside me, and she's like, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please, Julius, come over here and sign this. And she's like, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. He's like, he's like, my name's Julius. And uh, so I'm like, okay, he's going to sign for this little kid, obviously. He starts walking over. This is what's going through my mind. He hopefully will see this and sign it, because I'm literally like not two or three down from this kid, like right beside this kid. Yeah. And so he signs the kid. He doesn't say a word to the kid, not not a word to the mom, not a word to me. And I'm like, please, Julius, will you sign this? Please. I've come out here a bunch of times trying to get you to sign it. He just looks at it, shakes his head, and keeps on walking. Damn. Yeah, I know. See, uh, I'll, then he left, and I had a reason to hate him, actually. But Well, when I think of Julius now, too, though, I think of the time where the Panthers played Green Bay and Cam scored a touchdown. And he went to get the football, and Julius took it and just threw it away. Where he him. couldn't give it to the kid. Yeah. Of course, Cam went after it, did get it, did give it to a kid. But it was like, damn, man. Like, come on. like. I will say this. Last night in the preseason game, ne- neither one of those guys played. Okay. Uh, and they were hanging out a lot together on the sideline. So probably sure. besides Steve Smith, arguably maybe the two greatest Panthers yeah. of all time. I mean, you see instances like that. And it's like how much is, is how much of it is real animosity? How much of it is a maybe temporary anger? How much of it is just, it was the heat yeah. of the moment. It, or it could just be a psychology thing where it's like, this is cause we were playing in green Bay. I believe. No, no, know? it was here. Was it here? It was the 15 and one season. Yeah. We okay. smacked them. 
Um, well, we got up big on him, then let him come back as the Panthers. How, how 22 did he play, I assume? Yeah, he actually looked really good. Okay. And he didn't catch any like I thought he would. He, he got some in FanFest. Uh, he is fast as hell. How he hit the hole... I think his him being a he's not like small he's five foot eleven and two oh eight pure muscle, yeah. but him being undersized lets him kind of sneak between the tackles. Yeah, he reminded me a lot, and I know that Evan True Love's gonna hate this. And this is one preseason game, so take it for what it's worth. He reminded me a lot of Le'Veon Bell and his running style. Mm-hmm. And Le'Veon Bell's got a running style unlike any running back I've ever seen in the NFL. He's the most, Le'Veon's not the fastest, but he's the most patient runner. Yeah. You know how when you play Madden, the people you know that are really good at it, they, they'll they run the ball too. They won't yeah. just throw it every time. But they'll wait for the hole to open up, and then they'll hit that accelerate button right away. And which reminds me of another thing I want to talk to you about before we start recording this episode. Um He's that's the way Le'Veon was yeah. or is. Well, I say was. He's holding out for a big deal, so we'll see if he plays this year. The Steelers traditionally don't pay a ton of money. Who was who was the guy that was? Um, he played for the Eagles. He was a running back. Brian Westbrook. No, I don't think so. Maybe maybe it was he was a great pass catcher and he was really he was smooth. Yeah, he just kind of reminded me. He of stays that, hurt. But... Who did McCaffrey or Le'Veon Bell? McCaffrey. Bell? Yeah, that's a comparison. I, I've actually heard that comparison made by like some draft analyst. Uh, but that's he, me. He looked good. The defense looked phenomenal. It this defense goes from like a eighty eight overall Madden to like a ninety seven overall Madden whenever Luke Keekley's in there. Yeah, I mean we shut them the three series Luke Keekley was in there. They didn't get a first down. Okay. Kwan Short had a sack and another pressure. That led to somebody else getting a sack. I mean, our defense looked good, but it was against Savage, who's a ter- not a great quarterback for Houston. Mm-hmm. Watson came in later, but to go back to Madden real quick. So you know, I sold my PlayStation Four. Did you know that? Uh, it's hard to keep track of what I, you. I, I know. Um, <laughs> so I sold it and. I got that 4K Blu-ray right, player. No gaming systems right now. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Not on here, all fair. Okay. But. But. I like but. I'm getting that that scratch to quit okay. the podcast and get. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that uh, itch, not scratch, to want to play Madden. Yeah. And so my initial thought was, well, I'll just wait till the One X comes out. That's <laughs> November. Yeah. Football season will be pretty much over. Hopefully so, not for us. Yeah, hopefully not. Maybe. Who knows? I think it depends on Cam's shoulder. But anyhow, uh, so they're doing, they did this last year. They're doing a Madden bundle for the Xbox One. Uh, Not the X, the S, the one that's out now, 500 gig. You get the console, controller, all that, and Madden for $279. Not bad. Um, but I, that's a, the exact amount I spent on like that LG 4K Blu-ray player. Yeah. So I've asked Abby, can I get it? And she's not really having it. So uh, just order it on Amazon. Well, and if she doesn't cancel uh, yeah. it, then she must have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Shin Godzilla. But I, I don't know, man. Do you, you don't? When's the last time you bought a Madden? 360 era probably you didn't ever buy one for the xbox one not that i ever recall now do you play your xbox one now or are you mainly on that because you got a ps4 pro didn't you yeah i haven't played like i don't i haven't played uh, much of anything since i've moved in i've just been lazy about hooking things up like my xbox is one is hooked up and i've only i've the only time i've played it is when i have somebody over and we're doing the good old-fashioned like split screen or something Drinking um, old fashions while you do it. We didn't know how we were drinking. We're drinking uh, rum jobs and and some other stuff. Um, but I haven't hooked the PS4 up yet. I mean, I don't. I don't video, video game near as much as I used to, for sure. I used to be a big gamer, even yeah. when I kind of dropped out of it. And yeah. even after Jerry, after he they had Alan, he dropped out of it a little bit. You were still going. There. See, that's part of it. I like. Um, I, I I guess like I got into gaming with other people. When people yeah. started dropping out, it was harder. Um, that's I, a big part of it. Yeah, my 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 buddy Jacob plays now, and I, I need to hook the pro back up so I can get some Rainbow Six Siege because that is such a great game. 
Like that's one of those games. I was I've been thinking about Madden recently. You, you want to sell that PlayStation Pro? Interested? No, no. That's that's where I play Siege at. Yeah. Um, because like the people I do have online, they they're on PlayStation. But I, I've been, I've been thinking about Madden recently and how I used to play it all the time. I used to love it. Um, we well, play like, a lot. Oh, like in in probably around the time you and I met. Um, I mean, I'd spend most afternoons just like playing that i remember one girlfriend i had Me specifically too. where it's like we would get on the phone and i would just play mad like we would talk for a couple hours and i'd be playing mad like you're the whole good time. multitasker yeah well i mean i i need i'm one of those people i need something to do with my hands i'm talking on the phone oh yeah you do talking there's other the things you could have done with that whole well, I mean, you know when you talk for hours it only takes up you know uh, five minutes of yeah it. but uh <laughs> but uh we um yeah so i mean i used to play for hours a day mad. yeah um and yeah siege is something i could do that with as well it's just sometimes it's harder to 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 say oh, okay i'm gonna invest this time because when i sit down at the, at the console um i want to like if it's a single player game it's something i'm gonna want to play for a few hours and so it's a lot easier to say oh, i'm gonna watch one episode of this show which turns into three or four hours because you decide to start, oh, this is really good. I got to watch the next episode. Black right now. Right. But it, it's easier to sit say, oh, I'm just going to sit, I'm going to sit down for one episode versus, okay, I'm going to sit down and play this game and I know I'm going to be doing this for like three hours. You know yeah. what I mean? Psychologically, it's easier to do the, do the former. So, but, but the, I, I need to, I need to dive down. I, I still have Horizon Zero Dawn that I need to get back to. That was a really fun game and I'm interested to see where the story goes and that's, I still haven't near finished it. So, but then Rainbow Six Siege, such a fun game. Did you ever play that? No. You no. played uh, Battlefront. Was it the yeah, last the first game? Battlefront? Right. It was the last big multiplayer game you really played. Yeah, right? yeah. I, S- Siege is so much fun, dude. Really? So Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. See, and here's the thing: you were talking about friends on gaming. My friends that really play Madden. The only one I have, first of all, my brother Dylan's at a skill level. It's just no fun to play him. He'll whoop my ass. Yeah. And I'm not as good at Evan at Madden either, but I'm, I'm a little closer, at least I was in skill, who knows now. Yeah. But he's got an Xbox One, and that's one of the big reasons I was thinking about picking up an Xbox One, just to play Madden with him. Yeah. But it's just a fun thing to do, like, during football season when people come over or yeah. you're listening to podcasts or something. But for me, with gaming, Madden in particular, it's about managing free time. I can yeah. be reading comics i could be yeah pre-producing the podcast and yeah you know all that kind of say, stuff it's just a time investment it you is i mean even a game of madden it seemed like every time and this is my fault because i didn't game much i turned the ps4 on it had to do a 20 oh, minute update. 30 minute yeah. update i'm like yeah. what the hell yeah yeah that's unfortunate modern modern day gaming definitely has some hiccups that uh, yeah, we didn't have back in the day. All you had, to, remember when you just had to blow on the disc or wipe oh, wow. the, or not the disc, the cartridge, or wipe it off the disc. Or off you, of even the disc, you have like the disc would be reading like your PS2 is like so old, you're blowing in the disc tray and stuff, and then you get to work, and then that you know uh, Green Day starts blaring at you as soon as you get on the main menu. Yeah, and, yeah, good times. Yeah. All right. Speaking See, quarterback of, vision was the end of it for me. That's what I really started. No, to get what, out of it. what I didn't like was the rewind. Remember when you could rewind yeah. the play? Yeah. You can't do that anymore? <laughs> no. That's fine. You had like no. two rewinds per game or whatever. See, I played last uh, year's What Madden. I hated, what I, the thing I hated most about rewind is I'd run a play, get an interception at a key moment. I'm like, okay, I'm going to rewind here, run a different play, <laughs> throw an interception. Well, you were playing with Jake <laughs> DeLome a lot, I imagine. So that Probably. makes sense. Um, <laughs> and it also makes sense for us to uh, start this podcast now. Okay.